PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry. <laughs> Madam Ranjana Agarwal, thank you, ma'am, for joining thank us. Shri P.K. Rastagi ji, thank you, sir, for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Sanjay Khanna ji, for joining us. Pleasure to see you again, Subhabe. Thank you, ji. Thank you. And, of course, very nice to see the gleaming and smiling face of our chair, Mr. Suman Chanda ji. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Thank you, Vivek. I'd like to thank Mr. Sudhakar Saraswatula ji, Vice President of Corporate Secretarial at the Reliance Industries Limited. Thank you very much, Sudhakar ji. Very nice to see you. Thank you very much, sir. I like to discuss. Uh, uh, warmly welcome, Mr. Ajay Pulani, Chief General Manager for CSR at the Power Grid Corporation of India Limited. Thank you, Hulani Saab. Nice to see you here. Uh, Mr. So glad to see you, Mr. Inder Mohan Singh Ji partner Shadul Amarchand and Mangaldas and company. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Shivani. And may I request you to uh, actually get the window name corrected of today Indar Mohan Singh Ji, please. Uh, sir, actually, Indir Mohan Singh ji, uh, PPT hai, it will be uh, run by her by his teammate, Mr. Yankar. So haan, that way. Haan, but, haan, but the team, wo, a screen name change kar dijiye, please. Okay. Priyanka, can you please change the name of uh, to sir? Please? Thank you. Our uh, ICSI president has also joined, Mr. Desh Pandey. Hello, Mr. Desh Pandey. Good afternoon. Thank you, Sir Devendra. Uh, Desh Pandey ji for joining us and supporting this program. Thank you, thank you. And 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 courtesy you, we can we can see the numbers climb by the second of participants. <laughs> thank you so much. Sudhakar ji, namaste. Hi, Devendra, namaste. Congratulations, congratulations to you in person now. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, he has just he, he has taken the seat as president. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you very much. So it's indeed a very prestigious institute to actually head. And um, your results are continuously diminishing by the decimals, as I hear from people. <laughs> so which shows the high standards of your education and screening systems. Yes, yes, yes. So we are, we are a bit strict on the results, but the product uh, which comes out is really good. So right, that right. is the whole intent of and, and I must say that Devendra is a grassroots person and he knows the difficulty right from the students to the senior members and I'm sure he will do an excellent job this year thank you Wonderful. I joined Mr. Sudhakar in giving compliments to Mr. Desh Pandey and congratulations on my behalf as well thank you, thank you Giovanni, there are some messages to me from uh, you know some of my colleagues who are whom I had asked to join. This is some uh, can uh, uh, you know a capacity issue. Yes, sir. The so, number. No, your is thousand, right? So, you said you thousand, or five hundred. Sir, they have already many people registered. So, the rest are not registered. No, 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 Sir, unki bas already registration link pahunch chuka hai na that way. So, abhi aage on nai nai log nahi join kar. Haan, let me explain that to uh, the chair. Yes, sir. The problem hi hoye ki jo hamara webex ka link hai, that has about a capacity of thousand. Okay. And the zoom link has a capacity of uh, five hundred plus the panelists. Ye yeah, five hundred ki capacity hai, Sh Shivani thousand nahi hai. Sir, we just came to know about that, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, for that. Uh, there was a confusion on, I think, uh, Shivani's side between Webex and Zoom. Had it been a Webex link, we would have been able to take in about 1,000. But uh, on a Zoom, we can take only 500. So my sincere apologies to you and to all the colleagues and other friends who have not been able to join. So we will 
try and record, put this recording up onto YouTube uh, right after the webinar is complete. Suman Chadda ji, you topic so interesting suggest that, you know, the, the, the registrations uh, far uh, out uh, cry the numbers which we were expecting. So, uh, it's good news in a way, but, you know, in the sense people can't join, so they're disappointed. But could we have switched for future, uh, you know, uh, learnings? Could we have switched to WebEx in the last minute or no? Then we have to send the link again. Yes, it will be possible. Bhi nahi paega, so, the only possibility was if we were envisaging a large 500 plus, then we would have originally uh, have um, looked at WebEx only as the first link. Very right, sir. Very right, sir. But now, uh, <clears throat> going from this experience, we are learning and getting, more, uh, getting wiser. So we will be advising the IT team to also take a Zoom connection for a thousand, thousand. Uh, capacity. Right, right. I think we should start now. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, you already yeah. exceeded the capacity. Now nobody else can come in. Right, right, right. Wow. So, as I said, I'd like to warmly welcome our eminent experts of the evening, as well as the chair and co-chairs of the Corporate Affairs Committee on this webinar on CSR, The Changing Scenario. So, which would involve some analysis, implementation, and reporting of the revised law. Just a quick one on the CSR, which has evolved in India over the last few years from being voluntary to philanthropic to organizations instituting strategic programs to contribute towards causes that enable the welfare of the society. The focus and the effort made around CSR was enhanced by the amendments to the Com Companies Act in 2013 that defined the scope of organizations above a certain size and threshold. The amendments included the introduction of Section 135 that outlines mandatory spends, a defined program, and a dedicated committee to administer and monitor the program. In the present times, the ambit of CSR activities have grown many fold and is helping is helping strengthening the country socially and economically. CSR today plays a crucial role in supporting COVID-19 relief initiatives through contributions at multiple levels. Several amendments in Section 30, 135 and the uh, company as uh, corporate so social uh, responsibility policy mm -hmm. rule. 2014 have been notified with effect from 22nd January 2021. So in today's webinar, we would be discussing the issues in detail. To kickstart the webinar, I'll request our chair of the Corporate Affairs Committee, Shri Suman Chandaji, to give his chair's remarks. Over to you, please. Thank you, Vivekji, and uh, a very, very warm welcome to all my colleagues my esteemed panelists, my esteemed co-chairs, and um, each and every one of you who have logged in, I understand there was the limitation in the number of people and the overwhelming response we received have had uh, you know, some restrictions in some people joining in, but um, not to be disappointed for long. Uh, this is being recorded and will be released on YouTube very soon. So not only the ones who have joined, but those who could not can also take benefit of this uh, wonderful seminar, a contemporary topic, and something which touch, touches each one of us in some way or the other, nearly every day of our life. Because I see corporate social responsibility is a type of business self-regulation with the aim of being socially accountable. There is no one right way companies can practice CSRs. We all know that. Many corporate CSR initiatives try to positively contribute to the public, to the economy, to the environment. In today's socially conscious environment, employees, customers place a premium for working for and spending their money with businesses that prioritize CSR. What the public thinks of your company is critical to its success. I firmly believe that. And by building a positive image that you believe in, you can make a name for your company as being socially conscious. 
consumers, employees, and all stakeholders for that matter, prioritize CSR when choosing a brand or a company. And they are holding corporations accountable actually for affecting social change with their business beliefs, practices, and profits. In fact, in a survey and a research carried out in America, they found that more than 60% of the Americans hope businesses will drive social and environmental change in absence of government regulations. And nearly 90% of the consumers surveyed said they would purchase a product because the company supported an issue they cared about. And more so, nearly 75% said they would refuse to buy any product from a company if they learned that the company supported an issue contrary to their own beliefs. Again, the next generation of employees are also seeking employers that are focused on the triple bottom line, people, planet, and revenue. Companies are encouraged to take their and increase their profit into programs that give back. In fact, in India's scenario, uh, what I was actually checking today on the Google was, we have in 2021, more than 8,500 companies eligible and required and coming under the ambit of the CSR provisions. The total spent in that year was a whopping 20,000 crores plus. And the interesting part was more than 80% was from unlisted companies. So earlier, one kind of a situation which we imagined that only listed companies were largely affected by CSR and such other rules is actually a myth. It's actually the private companies unlisted who have profitable companies across the length and breadth of the country who are actually having to comply with this and the kind of impact they can make in uh, turning around and supporting the development of the country is uh, cannot be overemphasized. That comes to the key part, which actually somehow troubles me at night when I think of CSR spent 20,000 crores, but what is it really impacting at the ground level? Are people benefiting? Is some standards of living going to improve? Is the environment going to improve in certain areas? Are school, colleges, medical facilities, roads, infrastructure, electricity, and the plethora of activities which are happening under the umbrella of CSR, are they really coming to the man or the woman or the child or the aged who actually needs it? Who is being able to make that assessment? Is in pockets of you know some impact of assessment. Now in the Companies Act, if I have spending 10 crores and above, some impact assessment reports are required. But ultimately, this is a transformation. This will take time. This is going to be a generation change in the mindset of the people to be able to relate to the impact of CSR to the future generation. That mindset and the psychology which has to change it, the right amount of DNA. The moment this company is formed, the DNA of the corporate management, the tone at the top should ultimately be holistically combining their business goals, their objectives, their top lines, their expansion plans, their visions, and in you know, in built into that system would be a purpose for which they want to actually give back to the society as they go along the journey for making for themselves. It should not be a mandatory requirement. It is at moment, but they should be happily wanting to do it, just like the Pied Piper took the children and the uh, you know rats happily to a uh, place where they were, they were unknown and unwilling to understand. But here we can actually gauge the benefits over a period of time, this will be apparent. And the, in India is in fact, one of the only countries to make it mandatory. And the initiatives taken by the government by having the National Corporate Social Responsibility Data Portal is a phenomenal effort unheard of in the, uh, you know, even in developed countries, where if you want to do CSR activity, register yourself at the portal. Any company can then reach out to you, see their, their, their objectives of C CSR aligning with those of those bodies, and they can start looking at relationships, making a very good platform for connecting. I was not aware of this till somebody wanted to get register, and then I actually helped to do that. And it is actually making a lot of efforts 
uh, the company could immediately uh, relate to them in terms of one-to-one uh, -one matching. So today's uh, seminar talks about a very holistic story on CSR. One, what are the laws which we have to grapple with? As a corporate um, practitioner, I'll have to be most conscious of that. And there are a plethora of amendments which have happened in the last year, in fact, which actually affect me as a stakeholder, as a, um, as a consultant, as an auditor, and if I'm representing any company or board as to how to grapple with the nuances, the gray areas, the questions, the practical issues which are crop cropping up. That is why the overwhelming response, we had actually more than a thousand registration for this, but uh, I'm glad uh, we could do this today. We were originally wanting to do a physical uh, webinar, actually a seminar, but somehow the pandemic got extended and maybe hopefully in future we will do a hybrid or possibly a physical one. And, but I thank once again, all my participants uh, from the core of the bottom of my heart, my eminent uh, speakers and panelists, as well as my co-chairs to have made this happen. Over to you Vivekji and hope you have a really fulfilling and enjoyable afternoon today. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Jay Suman Chattaji for that very heartfelt welcome and very heart touching address, you know, and I think you brighten up the evenings with evening today with so many facts, you know, I think I really loved the word when you said giving back, you know, I think that's, that's the true essence when we talk about CSR. And I think you delighted everyone's evening by mentioning a whopping figure of 20,000 crores. And then making it even a little more surprising when you say that most of them, most of that has come from unlisted companies. Right. So, and yet, I think raising a very vital question, which we will all try to um, understand today, is the impact. Is it going to the right people? Is it reaching out to the right set of uh, beneficiaries? And of course, the laws and the amendments, numerous amendments you talked about. So we've got a great session ahead. And just to, if with your permission to correct you, sir, we didn't have 1,000. We had fortunately or unfortunately 1,400 registrations. So <laughs> why I say unfortunately, because we are sad that we are not able to accommodate. I truly feel very bad, um, uh, but we'll be, we'll, we, are, we are in the learning curve. So I'm sure um, we will do better next time on this. So with this, I would like to request Mr. P.K. Rastagi, the co-chair of the Corporate Affairs Committee of PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry, who's very passionate about this subject. And we've not heard enough of passion from Mr. Suman Chattaji, so I think Rastagi is only going to add to it. Over to you, please. Thank you, Vivekji, for very kind words. Uh, Mr. Suman Chadda, Chairman, Corporate Affairs Committee, and my uh, colleagues, uh, Mr. Sanjay Khanna and Ranjana ji, who are co-chairs on the Corporate Affairs Committee, Mr. Ajay Holani, Chief General Manager, CSR Power Grid Corporation of India, who has sponsored this program, Mr. Sudhakar Saraswatullah, Vice President, Reliance Industries Limited, and Mr. Indra Mohan, partner, Shardul Amurcha Mangaldas, and Mr. Devendra Desh Pandey, President, Institute of Company Securities of India. Uh, uh, good afternoon to all of you uh, and also dear participants. Good afternoon to all of you. I am indeed pleased to welcome all of you to this webinar on one of the most contemporary and talked about subjects that is CSR and related issues. Today we will have the benefit of listening to three accomplished speakers who I am sure will be uh, analyzing different perspective on the subject. The first one is Mr. Inder Mohan Singh, who is a partner of one of the top law firms of the country. That is Shardul Amarcha Mangaldas. And the second speaker is Mr. Sudhakar. Enough has already been spoken about him. That is his vice president of uh, Corporate Secretarial Reliance Industries Limited, the largest company in the private sector in terms of turnover, profitability, and market capitalization. Not only this, Reliance name is appearing at the top in the list of top 10 CSR spenders with annual CSR expenditure of more than rupees 900 crores. And third speaker is Mr. Ajay Hulani, Chief 
the CSR Power Grid Corporation. This company is no less, and its annual CSR budget is more than rupees 300 crores. Of course, we will also have the benefit of listening to the President Institute of Company Secretaries of India, Mr. Devendra Deshpande, who has recently taken over. <clears throat> I think after the world was hit by the unprecedented crisis triggered by COVID-19 pandemic in the year 2020, which is still continuing in its various forms and manifestations, the subject of CSR has become even more relevant. I would like to remind ourselves that when the concept of CSR was being debated for its incorporation in the Companies Act 2013, the subject evoked interest across business communities as well as uh, various chambers of commerce. After considerable debate, Section 135 in the Companies Act was finalized and a balanced path was taken. That is the companies were mandated to spend 2% of their pre-tax average net profit of preceding three years towards specified CSR activities in a financial year. If such companies satisfied the threshold limits based on the turnover profitability and or net worth, which I presume are well known to all the delegates and I'm therefore not repeating. It was further provided that the companies which were not able to spend the prescribed 2% of the average pre-tax profit of three years, then they must give the reasons for the same in their board's report. The fundamental principle therefore was comply or explain. The basis for having such balanced provision was that the companies were already subjected to corporate tax and if it was to be mandated, then it will only reintroduce the Inspector Raj. Uh, it was also a matter of concern as to whether government can mandate businesses to carry non-business activities. It seems the Ministry of Corporate Affairs was not happy with the implementation of CSR activities and CSR provisions as well. Although as per MCA website, about rupees 1 lakh crore has already been spent on CSR activities during the initial six years. That is up to March 2020. Currently, it is estimated that close to rupees 2000 crore is being spent on monthly basis towards CSR activities, which on annual basis works out to about rupees 24,000. There has been a little dip in this year because of COVID pandemic, but nonetheless, the Average amount being spent is of 2,000 crore per month. Effective January 2021, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs introduced a whole lot of changes relating to CSR by amending Section 135 and the relevant rules thereto. There is paradigm shift from the principle of comply or explain to comply or suffer. Pardon my using this comply or suffer, but nonetheless, it is, it is like that only. Now, if there is any unspent amount in the year marked CSR budget, based on the requirement of 2% of the average three years profit, the same is required to be transferred to a fund specified in Schedule 7 within a period of six months of the expiry of the financial year, unless the unspent amount is on account of ongoing subjects, which will have timelines spilling over to the succeeding financial years. Unspent amount in case of ongoing projects, which have multi-year timelines, if remains unspent for three years, then the same is also required to be transferred to a fund specified in Schedule 7. And during this three years period, the um, unspent amount is to be kept in a special bank account. Although this new provision may sound very innocuous, I may share that this provision, uh, which has been introduced in January last year, the central government has made it mandatory to spend 2% of the pre-tax average profits of the preceding three years, which works out to almost 3% of the post-tax profit. This is against the split of the Companies Act 2013 when it was introduced first time in April 2014 after considerable debate. 
the fine points and the issues relating to these areas and some other features of the new provisions will be explained in detail by the expert panelists. Some of the areas which I am sure will be covered are like annual action plan, amount spent in excess of the prescribed limit on CSR expenditure, ongoing projects, requirement of opening a bank account, special bank account for ongoing projects, capital expenditure, treatment as well as disclosure requirements when a special capital asset has been created uh, by using CSR funds, requirement of holding of capital assets, limit on administrative overheads, requirement of impact assessment, contents of the disclosure on the website, requirement on disclosures in the board's report. As recent as on 10th February 2022, that is about a week back, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs has amended the company's accounts rules and introduced an addendum to form AOC4. This new form CSR2 is of about 11 pages and is also required to be filed this year for the uh, year 2021 uh, by 31st March, coming 31st March. We need to furnish a whole lot of details which seems to be of repetitive nature. I think what triggered MCA to introduce such a detailed form seeking details of CSR expenditure is the impression of the senior MCA officials that there is a misuse of CSR expenditure and CSR provisions and that somewhere the purpose of CSR was getting defeated. The impression is based on uh, the interactions held with MCA senior officials in the recent past. Nonetheless, I still feel this is unwarranted and already relevant details are being filed in the annual report on CSR, which is as an attachment to the board's report. This new requirement will also create compliance burden and is against the spirit of the ease of doing business. Although I have many views on CSR like applicability of CSR provision on section eight companies, which do not have any profits, and which are normally incorporated for promotion of education, health, music, commerce, art, etc. Like our PhD chamber itself is a section eight company and it is for the promotion of commerce, yet it is required to comply with the CSR provisions. And are prohibited to, with these companies are prohibited to distribute dividend. But I would like to leave these issues for the expert panelists. Technically, such companies do not have profits and as such, they draw a statement of income and expenditure. And most of such companies have also taken exemption for, from the payment of income tax, etc. But still, they are required to comply with the CSR provisions. I would uh, therefore like to avail this opportunity to suggest that we should make representation to the central government for exempting Section 8 companies, particularly if they are prescribed annual CSR expenditure. Uh, as per norm is rupees 5 crore or less. In such cases, the requirement should be continued to be voluntary, that is on comply or explain basis and relieve such companies from the onerous compliance burden. As a matter of fact, this should be extended to all small companies of this size. For this, I seek support of Mr. Devendra Deshpande, President of the Institute of Communist Secretaries of India, because I understand whenever the Ministry of Corporate Affairs is uh, willing to dabble with the provisions, they seek opinion of the Institute of Communist Secretaries of India. I therefore avail this opportunity and seek support of Mr. Devendra Deshpande, who can use his good offices um, during his interaction with MCA. With these words, I would like to hand over the floor to the experts. Thank you very much for your patience and welcome all of you again. And sorry for the participants in absentia who are not able to have the benefit of listening to the experts who have been very kind to be with us this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rastagiri. And as I promised to all of you, it's going to be another passionate talk, which uh, we could hear from Rastagiri. Uh, 
not only detailing out some of the amendments and key areas of concern, including uh, the fact that we would like to put in a representation on companies, or especially the Section 8 companies who are with five crore or lesser turnover to be exempted from this. And of course, seeking the support of ICSI, um, which actually quickly takes me to Shri C, uh, to, to CS Devendra V. Dej Pandeji for his address. We're very eager to hear your thoughts on it because I think that spells out how the corporate laws would shape up going forward. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope I am audible. Good afternoon uh, to each and everyone present here. Uh, Sumat, Sumant Chaddaji, Chair, Chair of uh, Corporate Affairs Committee, PK Rastogiji, Co-Chair, and uh, all the uh, esteemed dignitaries present at today's uh, webinar. I must compliment uh, PhD Chamber of uh, Commerce and Industries for organizing this wonderful uh, webinar on a very apt topic. Uh, uh, CSR, the changing scenario, analysis, implementation, and reporting. So I, I, I uh, let me tell you that uh, PK Rastogiji has already put a uh, uh, put one responsibility on the shoulders uh, of ICSI to give certain representations. But let me tell you that Institute of Company Secretaries of India has always been into uh, this situation and position wherein we collect the information, we collect the representation, we collect the thoughts of the general public as well as from our company secretaries in practice or in employment or even from the students. We collect a lot of information and on that basis, we give representations to uh, Ministry of Corporate Affairs for any kind of improvements, changes, if there are any. So on our own also, Institute does provide a uh, lot of representations to Institute to make certain amendments and certain provisions of the Act. Even we were involved in the high-level committee, which was constituted by Ministry of Corporate Affairs for you know, um, making amendments in this um, CSR-related activities. Let me tell you, uh, friends, that uh, this is one of the area which has been changing quite often. Like it was in uh, it was uh, introduced in 2013, uh, corporate social responsibility, and uh, this was the point in which in the parliament also there were a lot of debate uh, th that had happened, and I think I think since then we have seen so many changes in CSR. Earlier, uh, even the wordings used. I don't. I, I will not go into the details. I think Sudhakarji is a better person to uh, inform you all about the wordings used in Section 135, which says that the comp co company should ensure. So ensure spending and just spending. These are the two words with which a lot of our law uh, uh, lawyer fraternity or company secretary fraternity have given their implement. Uh, uh, given their inputs. And that is why we initially decided, everybody decided that CSR is not a mandatory thing. But there were always view of few of the uh, legal counsels or company secretaries that whenever the words used are uh, companies shall ensure spending, that means it is mandatory. So a lot of, lot of uh, two different views were going on in, in this particular area since 2013. And we have seen so many amendments uh, in, respect of, in respect of the definition of CSR, in respect of what is included in Schedule 7 of the Companies Act 2013. Even though as a, as a president, I'm not supposed to talk about technical things uh, because that becomes uh, views of the Institute. So let me restrict to uh, the points which uh, I'm, I'm uh, here to talk about so basically ministry is thinking about creating a complete ecosystem so so uh, even though yes uh, somebody may feel that it is against the ease of doing business but with with global scenarios wherein the ESG becoming very very important uh, aspect of creating value for a corporate I think uh, this cor uh, social responsibility is going to play a very important role in years to come. So the value of the company will be determined not only by its profits, but also by sustainability. And the CSR will definitely play a very, very important role in the sustainability of any corporate. So I think, I think uh, let's not take CSR as a compulsory thing, or let's not take CSR as a burden, but 
if when corporate starts thinking that CSR will add value to my company, like globally also CSR, like ESG compliant companies are valued at a higher level than a non-CSR, uh, com uh, non-ESG compliant companies. So I think, I think uh, there is a requirement of changing the complete mindset of the corporate. So this is a view from my side. And also the ministry is thinking about a complete ecosystem wherein they are saying that, okay, you are doing it directly, then we don't have any issues. Companies can directly do the CSR. There is no issue. You report the things and we, we are fine. If it has been done through the implementation agency, then those implementation agencies should be registered with Ministry of Corporate Affairs. So they should file that CSR one form. If they are and in between, there were a lot of uh, discussions about geotagging the CSR projects also, which has not yet come. But uh, maybe sooner or later, we may see a geotagging of each of the CSR projects. So we are going in a digital mode. So each CSR project will get geotagged. So uh, for companies, we have already uh, geotagged our registered offices. So the CSR projects also will get geotagged. So I think that is a future which is which is coming up. Then now we have got uh, the CSR reporting as somebody uh, uh, earlier speaker has pointed out that it is forming part of the director's report already, the annual uh, report. But CSR 2 was introduced just to have two important aspects covered. One, it is an exhaustive reporting. So uh, ministry should have the details of each and every CSR project and how much it has been spent, how much it is unspent with the division of ongoing and on, uh, non-ongoing projects division. They need a complete details. And if, if the amounts are not spent, either they will have to be spent within three years or they will have to be transferred to a separate fund which has been created. So now it has become completely mandatory. And along with that, they also allowed you that whenever a company spends more than 2%, there are a lot many companies and corporates which are main, uh, like spending more than 2%. So that can be carried forward to next year. So that also, so in one way they are saying it is mandatory. In another way, they are also saying that, okay, if you are spending more, then you can take benefit of the amount spent this year to the CSR requirement of next year. So I think I think that has also been uh, and that that you can carry forward for next three years. So I think uh, that is also been uh, introduced in this particular uh, scenario. This CSR two is going to be a game changer for company secretaries, especially because uh, there will be requirement of lot of data which will be uh, put in. And uh, this year, at least it is a normal web form. So it will not uh, require any certification. But from next year, uh, all those companies will be, uh, add, uh, will be using this form as an addendum for the annual filings. So annual filings are usually certified by company secretaries. So uh, company secretaries will definitely play a very, very important role in having these particular uh, uh, forms filed with the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. After receiving the data of CSR 2, the, the ministry will actually analyze whether the CSR is getting done properly, whether the, there is an impact. So the funds may be, uh, may be spent, but it is not having the impact on the society. That might be a situation. So ministry want to actually analyze it. So for the, for the bigger project, wherein the companies are required to have more CSR, there is a requirement of having a separate ass impact assessment. But for normal companies, they will get the data from this CSR2 and they will analyze this particular thing. So I think CSR2 should not be treated as a hindrance. It should be treated as an opportunity wherein we are uh, putting the entire data together and giving it to the ministry for understanding whether our CSR is helping government in achieving its uh, results. I, uh, let me tell you that at the Institute of Company Secretaries of India, we are also having a lot of initiatives which we have taken for CSR. One is uh, we all uh, we have already introduced the CSR awards. So we we give awards to the companies uh, in three categories: emerging, medium, and large categories, uh, depending on the CSR which they spend. And uh, we give them. Uh, there is a complete process of evaluation of the CSR projects, and at the end of the year. We provide them, uh, we give them the awards. So recently on 18 December, we we had these awards and they were presented by 
they were presented by uh, none other than our honorable home minister amit shah ji so uh, it was held in uh, in december we also conduct various courses crash courses uh, for csr for our members as well as we also have a certificate course for assessment csr assessment how to uh, do the assessment of csr project for that we also conduct certain certificate courses institute has also come out with a guidance note on csr i think in all these initiatives i think sudhakar ji has played a very important role and i'm really happy to see him as a faculty so uh, let me not take much time i have spoken whatever i am supposed to speak and uh, on behalf of institute of company secretaries of india i must tell you that i'm really happy to be part of this particular webinar and i wish all the best to phd uh, chamber of commerce and industries for uh, having this uh, wonderful webinar and all the best thank you very much thanks a lot yeah just to interject thanks very much uh, just to be, i missed this out uh, there is a chat box please put in your questions for the q and a session there will be no direct questions um, on the zoom and uh, you know they will be able to take them in priority of the questions and uh, uh, how much time permitting thanks sorry uh, for the introduction over to you vivek ji thank you thank you uh, chair for um, actually setting this out because we're seeing a lot of uh, messages in the chat box and we would definitely like to take uh, as many questions as we can as we move forward so a uh, very pertinent points uh, made uh, mr desh pandey i think um, and i think one of the important things which you have very clearly highlighted how csr funds and the csr activities of the corporate world can help achieve the government's social objectives or social concerns i think that's at the core of any csr activity we do whether it's corporate listed unlisted companies or even as individuals you know we may not get listed out there but then you know how many hungry people can we feed even as an individual goes in some way or the other as a csr activity at the individual level and now we have who else but mr indra mohan singh partner shardul amarchand mangaldas and company to kindly talk to us and share with him with us his thoughts on csr law and recent changes uh, i think it will be a matter of not only great interest but even intrigue for a lot of participants here over to you none other than shri indra mohan singh thank you thank you very much mr sagal uh let me thanks of, uh, to begin with the phd chambers for conducting this uh, seminar and and very relevant topic i will say and uh, my special thanks to uh, pk rastagi ji sumanth chadda ji uh, uh, mrs agarwal and uh, devendra deshpande ji uh, our president of institute <clears throat> thank you very much for inviting us uh, i will be sharing a presentation i think can is it is it visible to all or not yet not yet one second so by the time we set up uh, let me just try and uh, what i'm trying to cover is a, a quick snapshot of the changes which have happened uh, i will be uh, not making it in terms of a view or in terms of uh any any uh, examining it uh, as a critical thing like we have been doing but my take would be to just quickly go through the changes which are there in the act as well as in the rules which have been introduced uh, to set up a base uh, uh just have is, is is the presentation visible now uh, absolutely yes, please go yes. ahead yeah 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 thanks thanks so uh, uh i have about 20 25 minutes which has been given to me and try and run it past little faster and uh, of course there is a q and a session we will be happy to look at that to begin with uh, my take is uh, uh, whether one likes it or don't likes it uh, this is something which is mandatory and uh, uh, it, it it is an opportunity to to see that the companies uh, can probably avail this and do it in a proper manner so that the benefit of the spend reaches the uh, uh, the beneficiaries uh, to which uh, the, the board has uh, probably carved out uh, the policy about so my take is that uh, given the fact 
the recent amendment which has happened and lot have been said so i will not touch upon the base with regard to from where we started and what it is now uh, the changes which have been come so i will straight away jump to the notification of the mca which came on 22nd january 2021 so uh, broadly speaking these changes were done in the uh, section 135 and uh, the rules were more or less uh, redrafted and uh, my compliments to the mca team and the team who were involved uh, especially in terms of the rules they have come out very clearly what they wanted to say and further supported by the faqs which the mca has issued and uh, the faqs probably answers many questions which which uh, most of the people have uh, so uh, at least on the terms of what is the understanding of the mca or what is the understanding which the mca or the regulator has is coming out uh, much more clearly as compared to the position earlier now uh, the recent amendment what has happened from that uh, is like mr rastaki touched upon uh, definitely there is a shift uh, which is happening from uh, comply or explain and it's moving to comply or pay penalty and uh, one needs to be very careful because the penalties are not uh, the penalties what we are used to the penalties are very high penalties so uh, having said that uh the basic changes which have happened in the uh, act is more to relate to the definitions a uh, few of them have been reduced few of them has been modified and the role of the board has been made much more onerous as compared to what it was uh, prior to this uh change and uh, uh, further procedural requirements have been enhanced in terms of registration requirements in terms of uh, disclosures filings and broadly speaking uh, there is also a talk about how to uh, uh, look at the impact assessment of these uh, exercises done by the uh, various corporates so to quickly touch upon the first aspect which is definition itself of the csr uh, now it, it provides for certain exclusions uh, this was not there earlier so quickly speaking what are these exclusions about so these exclusions are uh with regard to the activities which are in normal course definitely do not fall under the csr activities there is an exception to that because of the covid this was introduced that uh, there was a shortage of vaccines and uh, drugs so uh, the companies were given a relaxation that okay if you are an r and d company you can probably spend uh, for three years uh, into uh, in, into covid related r and d and the other vaccine related things so this was an exception uh point number 2 which is excluded is any activity which is taken outside the india so there was a little uh, a gray area uh, that whether the activity of the csr can cross the borders so i think they have clarified uh here again one exception has been built with regard to uh, if you are supporting any national level or a state level player uh, uh, uh any sports person uh, probably he can be sent out for training in the other needs uh, to overseas so barring that no overseas activity would be permitted contribution to the political parties uh, is restricted and excluded which is a welcome change uh, welcome uh, uh, concept uh, activities benefiting the employees of the company uh, this is being uh, put in uh, exclusion uh, having said that uh, which means that uh, employee there can't be any activity which is purely for the employee but if the employee is an incidental beneficiary that's permitted so the larger population needs to be uh, without any discrimination which can include our employee or its family it's not excluded but it can't be solely for the employees uh, sponsorship driving uh, marketing benefits uh, branding exercises any activity which is purely with the intent of uh, going for the brand building or something so those have been excluded uh, Beside this fulfillment of obligation under any law, if, if there is an obligation under the law, that can't be undertaken as a CSR activity. So these are the exclusions which are probably uh, being uh, introduced as part of the definition, and uh, which brings in some clarity that what what are the things which cannot be done. Uh, quickly speaking, uh, companies with uh, the CSR spend of fifty lakhs and below, uh, or not exceeding fifty lakhs, they have been uh, exempted from having a CSR committee. a uh, interesting uh, concept which has been introduced a lot have been talked about and people have started probably talking in the boards and the csr committees uh, 
uh, about an ongoing project. Uh, historically, there was, uh, there was no concept of an ongoing project. Of course, companies had uh, various projects which were crossing the financial year, and they were always struggling with what kind of impact it would have and what kind of spend they should have. I think that that particular ambiguity has been removed. And uh, they have now introduced a definition of an ongoing project, uh, which means uh, a project which is moving beyond a financial year. Uh, beyond a financial year, but there is a restriction on the time, the length of the, uh, the project. So what it says is that you can have a multi-year project and the maximum period for which it can go is three years, which will exclude the year in which it commences. Commencements here means uh, if the once a company does uh, sign a contract or gives a work contract, that's the time when it commences. It is needed to be commenced. Uh, so the projects can go into the multiple years. Any project which will not go into the multiple year will be deemed to be a project which is restricted to the particular financial year. Uh, which means, so board and the CSR committees will have to describe all their initiatives in CSR projects, whether it's an ongoing project or whether this is a non-ongoing project. Non-ongoing projects will have to be finished within a year and any amount which is unspent on the non-ongoing project as allocated will have to be transferred to a fund which is under Schedule 7. Uh, while uh, ongoing project, any amount which is unspent on the ongoing project will require to be moved to a special account, which is an uh, 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 unspent account, unspent uh, expenditure account for each financial year company will have to open that. And any amount which is on 31st March of every financial year on the ongoing projects is uh, unspent, that will be moved to be that particular account within a uh, period of 30 days. Uh, a special uh, uh, introduction has been made in the rules with regard to the CSR committee's role that they need to form an action plan. Uh, it was not mandatory earlier, but now uh, it puts an uh, obligation that the CSR committees must create an action plan to bring in more clarity in terms of how the, uh, uh, the CSR uh, uh, various, various projects are going on. So uh, this particular uh, action plan will include some of the basic things like formulation and recommendation. It was not that it was not being done earlier, but now it's more of an, a kind of a compulsion. Uh, it, it includes that you need to put in the list of approved projects and the programs and in manner in which it would be implemented. Modalities of utilization of the funds, how will you utilize? If you have an ongoing project, now we need to describe it, it will go for how long? One year, two years, three years. So it could even go to the fourth year. So in, in, in the year it will start, it will go three years after that. Now, how much amount it will be allocated in each year? Now one needs to break that the ongoing project into milestones. It's not being said, but unless you create into milestones, how will you distinguish an allocation for a particular year? So this will have to be done now. Uh, and basis that, uh, one will probably uh, announce to the shareholders at large, uh, it is required to be filed, it will be on the website. So uh, you are making a public statement about a project which is ongoing with clear cut milestones and parameters of allocation and the amount to be spent. So these are, this is going to bring in a lot of governance issue. Uh, and it's not issue, but clarity in the sense that people would have to disclose. And once you disclose, uh, you will have to explain if you are not doing it. And not only that, that uh, the problem will start if you are not able to spend that amount which is being allocated uh, in those uh, particular period of time. Uh, the amount which is in there in the unspent account will need to be moved to the central government funds which have been, which have been uh, prescribed in the schedule 7. Next. Uh, enhanced role of the board. Uh, earlier, the boards were responsible for uh, approval of the CSR policy. Uh, they were responsible for disclosures to be made uh, in terms of what is the policy and uh, disclosures about the spend, disclosure about the uh, why the companies were not able to spend. And uh, uh, they were also required to ensure that the activities which are being undertaken as part of the policy are being implemented. Uh, you should remember this uh, implementing agencies were given the responsibility of actually implementing the projects. And it was a view that if an amount has been paid by a company into an account of an implementing agency, uh, that is a sufficient discharge. Uh, in, in the hands of the company 
that, uh, 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 but that is no longer the case. Now, uh, the board's responsibilities have been much more enhanced, uh, sp specifically talking in the section, subsection five and six. Uh, these are two subsections where the penal provisions will trigger, uh, which, are, which are very heftier, I will, I will cover that in a, in a while. Uh, so today, what is the enhanced responsibility? Uh, the board will have to satisfy that the funds are utilized for the purpose it was allocated. And uh, it is becoming much more onerous. Board, board has a defense to rely upon a CFO certification to that effect. So only to an extent the CFO will certify that yes, uh, the particular amount which was allocated has been spent on this particular activity. So that certification will be the defense with the board to rely upon the same and probably discharge this obligation. Uh, second obligation, which is very important is like we discussed, transfer of the unspent CSR amount to the unspent CSR account, uh, which will have to be done within a period of 30 days. So any failure to that will result into a penalty. Uh, ensure transfer of the, if any uh, project, which is not a multiple year project, it's a uh, not an ongoing uh, project, will have to be finished before the financial year ends. If it does not uh, able to spend, the amount which is outstanding on 31st March will need to be deposited into a fund, which are which is in terms of the schedule six, seven. And uh, there is a clarification which has been given that if any amount remains unspent on 31st March, that amount on the 1st of April cannot be utilized. So what is outstanding on 31st March will have to go to the CSR uh, we have to go to the funds which are prescribed in the schedule seven. So uh, the uh, so there is no uh, relaxation in terms of the time period for non-ongoing projects, uh, which brings to me uh, in terms of when projects are being allocated, uh, companies are now become very conscious. Uh, even if they are very sure about a project which is going to finish in a year, probably they are uh, making them uh, as an ongoing project so that just to make sure that they do not lose out in terms of spend, if they are if they are, if they are not able to do because of any reasons or any force major reasons, so um, that is one flag where companies are very very conscious about uh, additional responsibilities on the ongoing projects. Uh, they have to look at the implementation in terms of the approved timelines. Like we said earlier, board once once it sets up an ongoing project, will have to break it up in terms of the years, in terms of allocation, in terms of the milestones, what they want to achieve. And this is that the spend will be done. Uh, they have uh, to watch watch upon year-wise allocation of the funds to be provided on the ongoing projects. Uh, they are authorized to do any modifications uh, which are which are uh, reasonable in nature by passing a resolution and giving a justification for the changes in the timelines. I think partly I covered this up. So uh, uh, any which is any amount which is unspent on the CSR, if this is a non-ongoing project, will have to move to uh, uh, one of the funds uh, which has prescribed under Schedule Seven within six months of the end of the financial year. If this is an ongoing project, within thirty days the money needs to move into a special account, and each company needs to open a specific one account in each year, each financial year, wherein all these monies pertaining to all the ongoing projects will go collectively into that account. So that account will be related to a particular financial year <coughs> and that account will be related to uh, uh, the unspent amount on the ongoing projects. Uh, the, 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 the MC has now given three years time uh, post the initial year in which this project was commenced to finish that project. So that's the maximum length of the project one can have. So if you are not able to finish your project within the three finance, succeeding financial years, in the end of the financial year, you have again 30 days time to transfer the unspent amount into uh, the fund, uh, which is prescribed in schedule seven. Uh, one of the questions here to be discussed is whether one, if one project is going slow and the CSR committee and the board is able to see that, can they switch over the between the various funds, the amount allocation, uh, it seems that is permissible because uh, any change in any allocations can be uh, cha changed by the board by giving a reason and uh, by by passing a resolution. However, uh, the time spent, uh, the overall time which is there uh, for those allocation for three years 
it will remain three years. So within the three years period, uh, one of the view is that yes, uh, one can change the allocation from A project to B project by giving sufficient reasons for the same. Yeah. <clears throat> Next. Uh, these are the funds. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to uh, give detail because these are already there in Schedule 7. Everybody must have seen it. Few have been added uh, in the recent past, especially the PM Cares. Uh, Swachh Bharat was there. So the PM Ganga, PM National Relief, and the Central Government uh, Social Economic Development. Yeah. <coughs> now, this is very important. Uh, quickly, like I said, the compliances of 125, 5, and 6, uh, which we have uh, uh, discussed while we were discussing the board's enhanced powers, uh, primarily relates to these health on your left hand side, spending of CSR and all. So we, the company must spend. And then if you are not able to spend, disclosure is the second thing, which is falling as part of 125.5, that the companies must disclose, even this was there even earlier. Uh, so you will disclose what you will disclose, what are the projects you will disclose, what are the unspent amount and the reasons thereof in the annual report. Uh, there is an additional provision which has been added in 135 is that if the company overspends an amount in a particular financial year, uh, this is uh, with effect from the January of 2021, uh, the day the notification come. So for the financial year 2021, if any company has overspent from its obligated 2%, uh, any amount in any project of CSR, uh, it is now permitted that they can uh, adjust it and set off against the next three years. So it is the limited time period is only next three years. After three years, whatever excess is there, it will lapse irrespective of the fact whether the company had an obligation in the succeeding years or not. So irrespective of the uh, quantum of the obligation or whether, they, whether there was no obligation because of the profitability position of the company, the uh, excess amount can be spent, can be set off within three years only. After that, it will lapse. Question is, with regard to the previous years, uh, any any overspend prior to 19, uh, prior to uh, year 2021 uh, is not allowed to be uh, set off, is coming up in the MCA's FAQs. Uh, so that this is a provision which is prospective and not retrospective. Uh, transfer amount to a specific fund. So this is like we have covered. So uh, part of 135.5 requires and 6 requires us to transfer the funds to the special funds under Schedule 7. Transfer of amount to the unspent account within 30 days, like we discussed. And after three years, transferring the same unspent amount into the funds under Schedule 7 are the obligations which are uh, very, very onerous. And any non compliance on this will result into what? A penalty. And penalty of what? Penalty of double the amount. So it is no longer, like I said in the beginning, uh, comply or disclose. It is the comply or pay double. So it, when you pay a penalty, it does not mean that obligation to spend is no longer there or obligation to transfer the funds to the government is not there. So penalty is separate. The transfer of the fund obligation will continue. So it is like Mr. Rastagi touched upon. Uh, in the great passion that this is a mandatory kind of a situation now. Uh, so uh, there is a cap which has been fixed of one crore irrespective of the uh, uh, default amount. Otherwise, it is twice the amount which is defaulted to be transferred to a fund or to be transferred to an spend account, which is which would be the penalty for that particular financial year. And if the amount is lesser than one crore, then it is one crore. Uh, office on a default have been uh, asked to pay one tenth, uh, which is ten percent of the default amount in the which has been uh, defaulted in terms of transferring to the fund or or transferring to unspent account. Uh, and in case there is a there is a, a floor on the penalty which is of two lakhs, so minimum penalty of two lakhs or ten percent of the amount which is defaulted will come upon the officer in default. Uh, any other non-compliance beside under 5 and 6, we'll go under the gen, uh, general penalties under section 450, uh, which is 10,000 rupees one time. And then for uh, every day, uh, there is a penalty of 1,000 rupees per uh, per day. Uh, and uh, there is a minimum of 2 lakhs. Similarly, on office, office on default, uh, the same penalty is there, except that the uh, maximum penalty, uh, the minimum penalty is, uh, uh, is 50,000. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think this was touched upon, so I'm not going to great details, except uh, implementing agencies, especially the Section 8 companies, uh, public trust uh, registered societies are not now compulsorily required to get themselves registered under Section 12A and ATG. It is not or, it is and. And the second thing is they, are, they need to register themselves with the, uh, with the NCA uh, with regard to their uh, on, online filing so that uh, public at large is aware of uh, that uh, implementing agency being uh, there. This is this is not mandatory. The TLA and ADG is not mandatory for the government related uh, implementing agencies. It is only for if the implementing agency is created by the company or this is a third party implementing agency, uh, but not not connected with the government. Uh, this is the new thing which has come up. Uh, to my mind, this is uh, of utmost importance because uh, in my experience, I've seen companies uh, making a spend, bona fide spend. They have been giving the money to implementing agencies. And uh, uh, if you uh, talk to, and many of you are from the corporates, many of the situations are that many NGOs probably have uh, uh, misused the money sometime. A uh, lot of uh, malpractices are happening in terms of the related parties of the NGOs making out the money. The benefit which is going to the beneficiary is uh, not, the, uh, uh, not equal to the amount which is being spent by the companies. So uh, I think impact assessment is, uh, to, to my mind, a welcome change. Uh, at least this will give us uh, uh, the boards and the, uh, the CSR committees and inside that what happened to the amount which was spent on the projects and uh, and this is a rolling thing it's a constant thing so what is made mandatory is the companies which have got a spend of spending obligation of 10 crores uh, for the three three pre immediate previous financial years so it is not one year it's a three previous year financial years if a company is obligated to spend 10 crores they are required to get this in, uh, impact assessment done. And this is prospective again, this is not retrospective uh, from, from the notification, which is January of 2022, 21. So uh, it is only to be done for those projects which are which have a size and a spend ticket of more than one CR. So anything which is below one CR is not obligated to be done. Uh, and this needs to be done after uh, one year is completed uh, on the project is completed so that uh, on the ground, one can understand what the change and what the uh, spend has in, uh, implications on the beneficiary. So it has given one year cooling off period to the implementing agency to do it. Who is implementing agency? Uh, the board can decide. There is no qualification. There is no uh, 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 definition of the same. So board can decide. All it says is it has to be independent. Uh, it can't be a related party. And uh, uh, there is another spend of 5% which has been permitted. Uh, if you remember earlier, there was a 5% administrative uh, overheads which were permitted uh, to be treated as part of the CSR spend. And uh, the definition of the uh, administrative expenses is there, including the exclusions. So uh, this is in addition to that, 5% of the CSR uh, expenditure can be spent uh, uh, in on the implementing agency's expenses but there is a cap of uh, 50 lakhs, I think. 50 lakhs? Yeah, cap of 50 lakhs is there. Uh, so uh, who can be, who can do the in independent uh, impact agencies? The board can decide uh, who, what is the frequency? I think they are left it to the boards and rightfully so. The boards can decide if they have multiple projects, there's no point of getting the implementing uh, assess impact assessment done uh, or uh, on the same, of, of the multiple projects. So one can decide about how do you want to go, up, go ahead with regard to all the projects which are above one CR, but they are multiple. So I think that freedom is being given uh, to the boards to decide. <clears throat> uh, quickly speaking, uh, two of the other changes, I think one I touched upon with regard to the excess uh, spend done by the company. Uh, the excess spend is now can be set off, but the excess spend does not include the surplus arising of the CSR activity. So what is the surplus arising out of the CSR activity? The surplus is if you have allocated a amount 
and let's say you have allocated the amount and transferred to an implemented agency and there is a bank account and let's say there is an interest which is being earned upon that account that interest is not an excess amount that interest belongs to the particular project spend and that interest or any additional benefit which is which is which is arrived at on that spend will be allocated along with that spend in that project it is not a surplus that is not uh, allowed to be set off that needs to be spent for the activity for which the surplus was allocated so that's the clarification which has come uh, another clarification uh, is there in terms of any capital asset which was earlier uh, this was not clarified that uh, the companies could hold a capital asset from from a spend of a csr uh, which was multiply used by the beneficiaries over period of time now those assets are mandatorily required to be uh, given to the implementing agencies or the beneficiaries they can come out with a a uh, 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 collective uh, entities wherein that capital assets needs to be transferred any asset which is lying in the books of the companies prior to the january uh, the uh, the law has given us 180 days time to transfer that or with an addition 90 days time to uh, to transfer that asset to an implementing agency uh csr in kind is a interesting uh, subject and uh, uh, i will just put on put the uh, basic facts and the basic clarification which are there uh, without debating it much because uh, to my mind uh, one needs to uh, further deliberate upon this and i think i will request uh, 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 institute of company secretaries also to uh, get more clarity on this and probably uh, many people amongst here may be the part part and uh, must have participated in the committee which were formed earlier so uh, i will leave for them to take a view on this all the question is can a company uh, spend the csr in in kind or not so historically 2014 mca filed a circular mca filed an affidavit in one of the uh, cases in delhi high court where they uh, gave an indication that maybe uh, if it is not a core activity of the core business of the company and not done with a profit motive uh, any contribution in terms of uh, uh, in kinds let's say a pharmaceutical company giving any drugs to a hospital uh, can be treated as a csr activity provided there is no profit motive in the same uh, having said that uh, 2015 there was a committee set up uh, on this issue and they deliberated they came out with many suggestions and many uh, questions 2016 uh, there was a uh suggestion given that it should not be allowed by the high level committee uh that's a committee i am referring to uh, probably can be discussed later on today and uh, while mca faq says that uh, any company is required to actually spend if you look at the definition of 135 uh, they need to spend now this becomes very critical with the introduction of the hefty penalty on 135 if the if the kind is not treated as a spend then you know uh, it's a double whammy you would be penalized twice that you would have spend in terms of giving something in kind but still if this is treated as and default uh, one is required to pay double the penalty for the same and then transfer the fund to the uh, government's account so this is something which needs more clarity uh there are uh, i will say notifications and guidance notes from institute of uh, cost and works account and institute of chartered accountants account uh, uh, both again not clearly specified and those are more towards the how the treatment can be done in the books of accounts uh, not from the point of of answering a legal issue so my take would be uh, the way you should read strictly section 1355 it says spend so as a lawyer i will be raising a caution by saying that the amount is spent and uh, looking at any other circumstance and i hear uh, many companies are have, are doing it and i keep reading them in various newspapers and various press releases that many companies are doing it uh, and uh, but no nobody has the full details about how they are doing it and how they treating it and what is the implication what they are looking at what view they have taken in terms of those spends done in kinds so uh, mc circular only says that uh, it it requires to be spent in, uh, uh, in in it needs to be spent and
and two, no give, no CSR amount can be uh, can be given in kind and monetized. Now I do not know what exactly that means. Uh, it can not be in kind and cannot be monetized means I cannot make a profit over that, or does it mean that uh, if I am offsetting setting off any CSR spend in terms of a kind with my CSR obligation to spend, does that mean monetization or not? So uh, it does not clearly answer that, although the high level committee's uh, recommendations were very much clear, uh, not recommending for the uh, CSR spending times. Uh, that's it. Uh, with this, I think I will end up and I hope I'm been within my time limits. Thank you very much for the patient listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shri Indamon Singh Ji. I think uh, an excellent presentation in terms of the content and the depth and the width. I think whatever you could cover in the given time, I think really stupendous. And um, though I could not, and it was probably not possible to understand everything what you said for a person like me uh, in, in one go, but I think there's much more to learn. And as the numbers also suggest of the participants, we will have to delve deeper into this as we go ahead, even beyond this webinar. Thank you indeed, once again, for your indeed a very in-depth knowledge session. 900 crores, I think it could open up the eyes of a lot of people. Yes, that's the kind of CSR budget which Alliance Industries has. And to manage such a mammoth size of funds purely for CR purposes, at the same time making sure that it goes to the right people, it has the right impact, and also creates a sense of social welfareness. It could be a Herculean yeah. task. I think if I start to visualize it, I wouldn't be able to. But we have somebody here who really does that job day in and day out. I would not waste time in actually introducing the uh, Mr. Sudhakar Saraswatullah because it's indeed a long, I think, introduction. But let me just read the first few lines and the rest of it, we, I think, know it and we will allow him to utilize those precious seconds or minutes for sharing his knowledge on it. Mr. Sudhakar Saraswatullah is a fellow member of ICAI and ISI, SI, ICSI and qualified secretary of the Institute of the Chartered Secretaries and Administrators UK and a law, law graduate from Mumbai University. With over three and a half decades of wide spectrum of experience in legal, secretarial, finance and accounts fields. Since 2005, he's working with Reliance Industries Limited as Vice President Corporate Secretarial and has worked with Berger Paints India Limited for about 15 years as Senior General Manager of Finance and Accounts. Ladies and gentlemen, I hand over you to Mr. Sudhakar Saraswatullah Jai for another knowledge session. Over to you, please. Thanks very much, Vivek. Thanks very much for that warm introduction and the good afternoon participants and good afternoon my fellow co-panelists as well as all the dignitaries from PhD. My At the outset, my sincere thanks and gratitude to PhD and Mr. Suman Chadda and my dear friend Mr. Siddheshwar Balla who were instrumental in bringing me to this particular forum. In fact, uh, Mr. Singh has already comprehensively covered everything. I was wondering what is left for me because the PISA base is the same. Only thing what we can change is the topics. That is what I'm going to try to do in the next 20, 25 minutes. I will, there may be some kind of an overlapping here and there, but I will ensure that overlapping is not, I will utilize that in some other way, which will be very interesting. I was going through a lot of questions in the chat box and some of my fraternity colleagues are also sending me personal messages requesting me to cover some kind of their own uh, doubts or clarifications what they require. But let me say that there were three uh, documents which are available apart from the uh, what's called the guidance notes of Institute of Chartered Accountants and Cost Accountants. Institute of Company Secretaries have come with their FAQs. 
Subsequent to that, Ministry of Corporate Affairs also have brought FAQs. And Institute of Company Secretary, as our president has mentioned, has brought a guidance note on corporate social responsibility. I was privileged to be in all these three uh, forums when they were drafting, because uh, ICS FAQs, when they were drafted, I was instrumental in that. And when MCA was uh, drafting the FAQs, you know, that they have also invited ICSI, and I was one of the representatives who are represented at the institute. A lot of your clarifications and your questions will be answered there. Some of them I will certainly going to cover in my presentation. I have a small presentation which I'm going to share with all of you. <clears throat> I'm sure you're able to see my presentation. Am I correct? Yes, we can very much see it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me put a disclaimer first that whatever the views I'm expressing, these are my personal views. Nothing belongs to the organization in which I am employed. Let me also say at the outset, CSR is not a charity. CSR is a corporate responsibility, and now it is a legal obligation. So we have to take this with utmost seriousness because non-compliances are going to lead lot of stringent penal provisions are there, which will be in right regard. Responsibility towards the society, if I say that organizations use resources, whether they are public companies, private companies, listed companies, or unlisted companies. Because several times the question comes that we are a small private limited company, why we have to uh, incur CSR expenditure? The answer to that is organizations use resources that belongs to the society and they're expected to operate in a sustainable manner and should spend some amount for preservation and sustainability of resources, which belongs to the society. The philosophy of giving back to the society has been an integral part of the Indian culture and ethos, which has also been imbibed in our traditional Indian businesses since time immemorial. In the words of Ratan Tata, the developing world has two options. The first is to sit back and react when the problem arises. And the second one is to act as a conscious citizen and rise above our vested interest for the sake of future generations. So that the history doesn't record that we have deprived them of their livelihood. Now companies are no longer being judged only on the basis of only on the basis of the financial matrix, but also how they are creating an impact across the society, and in particular, how they perform on the ESG matrix. In fact, all my uh, company security and chartered accountants must be knowing this section 166 of the company Act 2013, for the first time has cast fiduciary duties on the directors of the company. And one of that is that to promote the objects of the company for the benefit of its members, as a whole, and in the best interests of the company, its employees, the stakeholders, the community, and for the protection of environment. So it, the responsibility of the board is not only confined to the shareholders or to the regulators or to the employees or shareholders, but also to the community as well as for the protection of environment. The government wants to corporate houses to spend some amount in social sectors like education, health, and health, rather than involving them in the individual philanthropy. The intent of CSR obligation is not merely to generate funds. If it is the only objective to generate funds for the government, they could have certainly achieved that through the additional taxes by, in, by imposing it in, a, in, a, in every budget. It is to involve companies to ease their innovative ideas and management skills towards the social development and the development of the country. The concept of CSR has been introduced under the Companies Act 2013 for the first time. And India is one of the few countries that have mandated CSR provisions. Companies, those triggers applicability of the provisions of Section 135.1 shall constitute a CSR committee and have to ensure spending 2% of its average net profits made during the three immediately preceding financial years. In case they have not able to spend that, the reasons for not spending is to be given in the board's report. 
this particular line was interpreted by the industry as in comply or explain approach, which was not at all the intention of the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. In fact, in some forums, Ministry has very clearly mentioned that it is not comply or explain. It is only in case, in any case of eventuality, in one year or, or the other, if you are not able to spend it, then only you have to explain it. But most of the times what happens was, it was taken as comply or explain approach. I remember in 2017, I think if I am not wrong, MCA has sent a lot of show cause notices to virtually every corporator that you have not complied with 135.1 and we are giving you a show cause explain the reasons for why you are not spending that money. If you have spent it, you have to say, I have spent the money. If you are not spending it, it is not applicable to you or whatever it is and all that was the answer they were expecting. That point of time when we said that, this is the line which is there. If, we are, if I am not able to spend the money, I can explain it. And I have already explained it in my board, my board's report. They said, no, that is not the intention of the ministry at all. Now, corporate social responsibility means uh, Mr. Singh has already covered the definition. I'm not going to do that. But for the sake of continuity, one or two places, I do have to mention about that. Corporate social responsibility means and includes, but is not limited to, Projects or programs relating to activities, areas, or subjects specified in Schedule 7 of the Act. As against the previous definition like this, now the new definition is CSR means the activities undertaken by the company in pursuance of its statutory obligation laid down in Section 135 of the Act in accordance with the provisions contained in CSR rules but shall not include certain activities. So this was... This is an inclusive definition, whereas the new definition is very exhaustive. The old definition means it starts with, it means and includes. It, is a, it was an inclusive definition, whereas the new definition is virtually covered everything other than those ones which shall not include. Then they have mentioned a few things like this, which Mr. Singhal already mentioned it. Normal course of business of the company, any activity undertaken by the company outside India except the training of Indian sports personnel contribution to political parties, activities benefiting the employees of the company, sponsorship basis expenditure, fulfillment of any other statutory obligations. Now, it, are CSR provisions applicable to private and Section 8 companies? Answer is yes. Why? I have already given the answer for that because though it is a small company or a big company, every company is utilizing the resources belongs to the society. Because you are utilizing that particular thing, you have a social obligation and you have to discharge CSR. That's what the intention of this particular provision is. If the holding company is liable to spend the CSR or the subsidiaries or associates of such company are also liable, answer is no. Because this question was coming time and again. It is only company specific only where section 135 one applicable that the CSR provisions gets triggered and then the other provisions will follow. How to compute the net profit for the purpose of section 135.1? It was explained in section 135.5. It says that net profit shall be calculated in accordance with the provisions of section 198 of the Act and shall not include any profit arising from the overseas branch or branches, whether they are operated as a separate company or otherwise. And similarly, any dividend received from the companies which are already discharging the CSR obligations if that, that dividend is not part of a profit. And in case a foreign company, net profit means the net profit of such company as per the profit and loss account prepared in terms of section 381, one year and with section 198. This is how the profit is to be arrived at for the purpose of 135.1. Another thing is that CSR does not cover the activities in the normal course of business. Now the question comes, what is normal course of business? In common parlance, normal course of business refers to the usual course and routine business activities like sale, purchase, etc. Whether all activities under normal course of business are not covered under CSR expenditure? No. Those companies which are engaged in research and development activity pertaining to development of new vaccine, drugs, and medical devices related to COVID-19, such activities can be considered as CSR subject to certain conditions prescribed. So that means normal course of business activities. What is normal course of business? We all know that which is your usual course of your business on routine business activities, except that this exception, whatever is provided. Activities benefiting the employees of the company is also not a part of CSR. 
which are the activities benefiting the employees? Any activities where beneficiaries are exclusively the persons, not only the employees, please note this thing, exclusively the persons who are associated with the businesses of the company, they may be considered as activities in the normal course of business. That means if you are taking up any activity, CSR activity, even if it is not for your employees, say it is, might be for your dealers, for your vendors, for your stakeholders or for your shareholders as a matter of fact, these are all the activities which will not be considered as a part of CSR. However, if the intention of the project is not for the employee welfare, but for the benefit of the society at large, and incidentally, some of the employees or associates or benef beneficiaries of that particular project, such expenditure may be considered as CSR expenditure. One has to be very careful, never try to camouflage the things. If it is the intention is not only exclusively for the persons benefiting the, the company as such, but it is for the society at large. We don't need to explain this in as many words. Every one of us, if we introspect what we are doing, we can find the answer for that. Now, the CSR committee, another way that Mr. Singh has already mentioned it, that under 135.9, if the amount what is to be spent is not exceeding 50 lakh rupees, the constitution of CSR committee is not applicable. Several times the question comes that, I am already having a CSR committee. Can I dissolve that CSR committee? The answer is yes. Though rule three of CSR rule says that once 135 one triggers that for the next three years, if that the threshold limits are not there, then only you can give it up. Otherwise you have to continue to have that committee and spending that money, whatever it is. But since there is a clear provision under 135.9, according to me, that committee can be dissolved. Unspent CSR money, a company has unspent CSR money for the financial years 2014 to 2019 and 20. That means 14, 15, 15, 16, 16, 17, up to 19, 20. Is the company required to transfer the entire unspent amount for the said years in the financial year ended March 31st, 2021? Answer is no, because the rules are effective from 22nd January 2021. And the rules are always prospective or not retrospective unless until it is clearly mentioned in the rules itself. In the CSR rules, it is not there. So these rules are only prospective. Because of that, only for the financial year 2021, if any money is unspent, that is to be transferred and not for the earlier years. Another question comes up is that if the company has made a provision for such unspent amount in their balance sheet, and the same is outstanding as on March 31st, 2021. Do we need to transfer? Answer is again, no. Because prov providing the accounts is only a matter of your, uh, what's called as you know, the company's decision to make a provision for that. Not by merely not providing, you cannot uh, escape. By providing, you cannot get caught. If the rules are always retrospective, so the unspent money of the previous years need not be transferred to the specified fund account. The amount not spent by the implementing agency, this question is coming up again very prominently. The company has given the amount to spend of her CSR activities to the implementing agency, which has not spent the amount. Companies ask what I can do, that no more we can say that because the responsibility for discharging the CSR obligations and to monitor the implementation of the CSR projects, activities, and timelines is on the company. That means the CSR committee as well as the board of directors and not on the implementing agency. Hence, company is responsible for this. You have given the money to your implementing agency. It is your extended arm. The principal and agent relationship may come into existence. You need to take up the matter with your implementing agency, but as far as the company's act is concerned, you will be held responsible for not spending the CSR money, not discharging your responsibility and obligations. A company has contributed money to the corpus of implementing agency. Does it qualify as CSR expenditure? The concept of corpus is not there in the revised rules. So one should be very clear about it. If any money is not spent on the CSR activities, Within that year, you have to transfer to specified fund. If it is an ongoing project, obviously you have to transfer to the unspent CSR, uh, a separate bank account is to be opened. 
set of this is a good uh, decision of the ministry that excess expenditure incurred it can be set off for the next two three financial years again the question comes prior to the rules that means prior to 2021 financial year i have spent excess money can i set off answer is no the same reason what i have given and suppose it so also happened that i have spent excess money but for the next three financial years i don't have any csr obligation because i am into losses there, there are no profits so can i set up the excess expenditure of the, as and when i have the profit answer is no if you don't have the profit in the next two, three financial years that set of facility what is available to you it will get lapsed unspent csr money other than for ongoing projects shall be transferred to specified fund within six months of the closure of the financial year can such money be spent before the expiry of the six months this question is again asked that sir before transferring the money to the specified fund between april to september we will spend that money for the whole year you have not spent the money and once the financial year is over you are coming and saying that i will spend the money now answer is no you have to transfer that money up to 31st march you have not spent the money means you have to transfer is a time period of six months has been given for that so what is the specified fund it was already mentioned there are four specified funds are there as of date cfo certification whether cfo shall submit his certificate only to the board because it was mentioned actually the cfo has to submit the certificate to the board of directors or to the csr committee though it is mentioned that the rules that cfo shall certify to the board to the effect that the funds disbursed by the board for csr implementation have been utilized since the csr committee is also under an obligation to monitor the implementation of the project and the expenditure incurred it's advisable that the cfo shall certify that to the csr committee also second question comes what is the frequency that cfo has to submit that certificate again it is not clearly mentioned however that you know that means what once in a year if you submit it that would have been sufficient but according to me considering the responsibilities which have been entrusted upon the csr committee as well as on the board of directors if i am a member of the csr committee or the board i will certainly ask the cfo to give me a quarterly certificate at least if not monthly basis quarterly is sufficient because i am supposed to know whatever the money i have given it is it that money has been taken care or not taken care that is very very important to me so that's why the cfo certificate according to me it is advisable to have it on quarterly basis can cfo engage a third party professional to monitor the utilization of funds and confirm utilization to the board answer is yes because cfo may not be able to individually look into that or he may not be having that kind of an expertise towards which he can certainly engage third party professionals based on which but he should not blindly give a certificate back to back certificate kind of thing he should also understand he should engage himself in monitoring the utilization of funds the way they are expected to be utilized and then he has to give that certificate to the board and the csr committee because the cfo is supposed to know that at the end of the day it is his responsibility also capital asset the csr amount may be spent by a company for creation or acquisition of capital asset which shall be held by a company established under section 8 of the act or registered public trust blah 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 and all a beneficiaries of csr project in the form of self help groups collectives entities precisely what it says is that csr asset is not to be held in the company's books that is the crux of the thing because those several companies earlier when they were spending the csr money towards the capital expenditure in the balance sheet they were showing it as capital as i mean csr assets they were not claiming any depreciation of that but still it was coming as a part of its net worth which is not supposed to be might be misleading it might be that is the reason why the the regulator wants that capital assets of an account of csr are not to be there in the books of the company so any kind of acquisition should be other than the company in the in in the in the given the trust or section 8 companies blah 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 at the same point of time the rules also says that in case you are already having the assets those assets are to be transferred within 180 plus 90 days so total of 270 days those assets are to be transferred to the 
other company, I mean, outside the company, you can say. Now, while transferring the capital asset, the question comes, the stamp duty implications. Who shall bear the stamp duty implications? Though it is not said in the rules as such that who will pay the stamp duty, it's obvious that the company will pay since it is its obligation to transfer such asset, not the recipient company. So obviously, that company has to pay the stamp duty implications. Second question is, can such stamp duty be claimed as CSR expenditure? It is very generous gesture of the regulator according to me. They said that, yes, you can uh, take it as a part of CSR expenditure. That is a great relief. Otherwise, it would have been a great burden on the industry. Annual action plan, already it was talked about by Mr. Singh. I don't want to deal with that. But the only thing is, annual action plan should clearly outline the mechanism and the modalities for actual implementation of CSR projects and programs with a view to ensure measurable and sustainable outcomes. Sometimes this question also has been asked, uh, Key, that is annual action plan to be prepared every year? The nomenclature itself says it is annual action plan. So obviously, according to me, this action plan is to be prepared on every year in the beginning, before beginning of the financial year. What are the projects or the CSR activities you are going to take? What are the mechanisms of uh, implementation of those plans? What are the modalities of monitoring and execution? All these things are to be clearly spelled out in this action plan. Impact assessment, every company having an average CSR obligation of 10 crore or more in the three immediately preceding financial years shall undertake the assessment. Such assessment shall be through an independent agency of the, the CSR projects having an outlay of one crore or more. They shall be conducted the projects which have been completed not less than one year before undertaking the impact study. That means only after completion of the project, after one year of that, the impact assessment is to be done. It is that is the minimum period. What is the maximum period? It is not prescribed because once you conceive a project and implement that project, by the time the impact of that project comes, it may take time. It, depending upon the project, it may take one year, two years, three years, and so on and so forth. So the objective is that whenever you are spending the money, whether the requisite impact is there or not there, that is the purpose of this. Such impact assessment reports shall be placed before the board and they shall be annexed to the annual report of the CSR also. Expenditure incurred may be booked towards CSR for the financial year. A limit of 5% of the total CSR expenditure is given. That was a good. But unfortunately, it has been again a ceiling, a cap has been prescribed that 50 lakh rupees. For a company of our size, 5% is a good amount of money, but 50 lakhs is virtually nothing for the impact assessment purposes. Who can conduct the impact assessment? There are no qualifications or criteria as who can conduct the impact assessment. In fact, this is a, a great opportunity for all the professionals, whether chartered accountants, company secretaries, or cost accountants. In fact, I requested instead of company secretaries to take up this. And a specialized course is already being done for the, the corporate social responsibility. And the impact assessment is also a part of that only. Whether impact assessment needs to be done every year, it is to be done project-wise and not financially year wise So modalities of impact assessment to be decided by the CSR committee in consultation with the implementing agency. Because entire impact assessment you may not be able to conduct within one year itself. As I was mentioning that it depends upon the dynamics of the project, it depends upon the advances of the project, the impact assessment may have to be done in maybe in one year itself, maybe in two, three years, it all depends upon that. We cannot say how it is to be done. Number one, number two, it is a new concept. Over a period of time, we will get the enough maturity and we will definitely be, is going to deal with this particular issue. If impact assessment is done on a voluntary basis, whether the cost incurred on the same will be qualify as CSR expenditure, no, it will not qualify unless until it is mandatory. If it is voluntary, it is done, then that, uh, that uh, it will not be a part of your CSR expenditure. Thank you very much for your patient listening. And uh, at the time, I think uh, at the time of question answer session, we can deal with further questions. Thanks very much once again to PhD and all the participants for patiently listening to me.
Thank you, Mr. Sudhakar, for your very great explanation on the subject. Uh, now I request Mr. Ajay Hulani to kindly share his views. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much yeah. for being a part of this panel, sir. We welcome you, sir. Please share your views, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. A lot of thanks to PhD Chamber of Commerce for inviting me for this presentation. But are you playing the presentation or shall I put? Sir, you can play. You have the right, sir. Yes. Just now, please. Right. Thank you very much. I am Ajay Holani, Chief General and Manager, CSR from Power Grid Corporation of India. As we know, Power Grid Maharatna Central PSU under Ministry of Power, Power Grid has presence all over the country and joining the nation through its transmission lines. Power Grid India, the largest electrical power transmission utility, company is constantly rated excellent with MOU with Ministry of Power since 1993-94. We are providing consultancy services to more than 150 domestic clients. We have global footprints in 21 countries, creating more than 25 clients. Present interregional transfer capacity created by Power Grid is 1,12,250 megawatt and operates around 86% of interregional transmission network. So far, Power Grid has established 1,72,000 circuit kilometer of transmission lines. Power Grid has having 264 number extra high voltage substations, and, and we are Continuously maintaining transmission system availability above 99%. In regard to CSR, company believes in integrating socio-economic development interventions with its core strength business planning through its CSR. Vision of power with CSR policy it should be a corporate that sets a long-term strategy for social and economic development of communities through initiatives, internal development, education, skill development, health, and other areas of national importance. Company has aligned CSR and sustainability policy as mission with its business policy so as to conduct business in a sustainable manner Adhering to the principles of avoidance, minimization, and mitigation in dealing with environmental and social issues. Just Mr. Alani, your, uh, your presentation is not moving ahead in case you are looking to move ahead. I thought I'll just okay. let you. Okay. Is it is coming to... now? No, it's not. You'll have to uh, take it off and then uh, you know put it again. I think. Or, or, or yes, what sir. you can do, or what we could do, uh, sir, is that in case you can make it full screen, na? Yeah, just, just make it okay, fine. Up, okay, fine. Is it moving now? It is. So just go yeah. to that slide. Now, then, you know, I thought yeah. I just okay. Or you can just put it on slideshow. I think it will be slightly bigger also for small. No, that, you know, our system is not configured to, you know, uh, make Chalo, it happen on that. Doesn't day. matter. Okay. 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 It is okay? Yeah. Yes. yeah, it's fine. It's fine now. Okay. CSR is generally understood as being the way through which a company believes achieves a balance of economic, environmental, and social imperatives by simultaneously addressing the needs of stakeholders for the inclusive socio-economic growth of the country society. Power stakeholders, 
generally located on the periphery of the commercial operations of the company are directly impacted by operations of the company this is why csr and sustainability activities are given priority in the neighborhood around power grid area of operation and new projects power grid has pan india projects which is a big advantage when it comes to serving the less privileged uh, less privileged society across the country we had done csr projects in almost all the areas broad spectrum of csr project done by power grid are related to health care livelihood generation education environmental sustainability rural development skill development sanitation etc our csr budget this year is around 257 crore this will be around 300 crore next year we are since last 5 6 years we are meeting this csr obligation or this requirement we are meeting the budget and doing expenditure as per the budget power grid csr is having outreach in more than around 28 states and union, union territory of the country during covid 19 pandemic a contribution of rupees 200 crore but done to pm care fund rupees 130 crore in 2019 20 and 70 crore in 2021 power grid has also taken up projects of around 30 crore for distribution of meal packets ration pp kits to laborers financial help to state and district authorities for buying medical equipments during the covid pandemic situation the entire country was under lockdown power grid with the help of its employees distributed around 1836 metric ton ration and pp kits to more than 2.5 lakh beneficiaries across beneficiaries across country and i will like to inform that at that time we had also maintained our transmission system effectively with availability more than 99% we had also provided cold chain equipment for vaccination program in ladakh punjab sikkim and mizoram and set up oxygen plants at gurugram haryana and jaisalmer rajasthan during this pandemic situation in implementing covid 19 projects our experience were generally involved in carrying out our employees were generally involved actively involved in carrying out really but across more than 260 installations across country we had given expressia payments to contract laborers also these workers help immensely during relief works isr individual social between the small civil in his or her actions that of affects on communities this experience demonstrate the concept of isr in real time it has been learned that csr is not just a statutory compliance but responsibility of every employee towards its community in health care field all get through csr it touching the lives of millions plus people this ram sadan is the flexible csr initiative of power grid this has been conceptualized by power grid for mitigating hardship faced by poor patients and their attendants who come from different parts of the country to various government hospital shortage of night shelters for the patient and their relatives is being mitigated by power grid vishram sadan we have set up three such vishram sadan one at ems the ems delhi another at igims patna and kgm lucknow these three are operational we are setting up such similar vishram sadan in other parts of the country varanpur baroda darbhanga guwahati rachi bangalore these are in under implementation stage and are going to be completed very soon we have spent around 158 crore in setting up vishram sadan our another important project under csr is related to cancer care cancer is a leading cause of death worldwide 
we are setting up nuclear medicine unit at tata memorial center mumbai with a contribution of rupees 30 crore by power grid 30 crore by government of india this unit is going to be commissioned very soon we are also setting up modular operation theater at women and child hospital at tata mumbai this will also be commissioned somewhere in march this year we have also established capacity development center for capacity development in oncology at dr b barua hospital cancer institute guwahati we are also taking on some more projects for cancer care in other parts of the country h for amendment rules project life timeline timeline should not exceed beyond 3 years excluding the financial year it was commenced completion of project within the timeline during the pandemic has proven to be a challenge for projects involving civil construction projects projects involving importing sophisticated medical material equipment have also been got delayed during this pandemic situation for dealing all these things we have deployed extra experienced personnel for each project having high investment and impacting the brand image of the company monthly targets are also being set for achieving the utilization target power grid is directly impacting with oem for supply of equipment within permission within permission delay we are also we have also taken up projects related to rural development and water conservation our one of the flexible scheme this is also our flexible scheme integrated watershed management which is basically integrated village development program we have taken up such two projects with ecreset which is international crop research institute for sevi arid topic these projects have been completed one in district purnamul in andhra pradesh another in bijapura karnataka seeing the success of these two projects we had we have identified we have we have started identical project in kalhandi district in odisha and we are also thinking in this direction for integrated village development in future also these projects have created low cost and water harvesting structures and resulted in project productivity enhancement and crop diversification capacity building and income generation program for the women etc i am glad to inform that power grid has received national csr award 2018 for the above for above project this award was for ministry of corporate affairs and conferred by honorable president of india there is lack of interest from the project on village development our experience is that there is a lack of interest in the local of the local community in participating and contributing to csr activities of companies this is largely attributed to the fact that there exists little or no knowledge about csr within local communities no serious efforts are generally made to spread awareness about csr in this regard i would like to say the efforts are required to be made by implementing agency in corporate companies among communities this can be done by spreading awareness among us local communities through proper publicity in education we have started another important scheme which is power grid gyan kendra this scheme has been conceptualized to renovate and modernize public library at power grid gyan kendra based on the concept of ict information communication and technology with a good mix of conventional reading and interactive learning three such power grid gyan kendras are under implementation stage in delhi satna madhya pradesh and nagpur maharashtra power grid is also considering to set up such gyan kendra at other parts of the country the smart classrooms such technology enhanced classrooms that foster opportunities for teaching and learning 
by interacting learning technologies such as computers, specialized software, technology assistive, etc. I want to inform that we have established more than 500 smart classes across the country. These smart classes are under operation. Every entity, in regard to the new rules, I would like to say that every entity covered under sub rule one intent to who intend to undertake any CSR activity shall register itself with the central government by filing the form CSR one. We have seen that organizations are reluctant to undertake CSR project due to requirement of mandatory CSR one registration number. Another thing is, as per amendment rules, company may engage international organizations for designing, monitoring, and education evaluation of the CSR projects. We are also considering in this direction. In the field of nutrition, we have taken up the project of providing cooked meals, cold cooked meals, millet meals to children, which is an initiative implemented by district administration, Adilabad in Andhra Pradesh. Telangana which is transforming lives of children and helping, helping in curbing the we say, cycle of intergenerational malnutrition, providing hot cooked, highly nutritious millet meals to children between the age of three to six years at Anganwadi centers, prepared by Anganwadi teachers from ingredients procured directly from farmers' cooperative society, directly generating livelihood for local farmers. In addition to nutritional supplements, a basic educational kit, which includes preschool uniform and learning aid tools is being provided to children in Anganwadi centers. This motivates children to learn and prepare them for primary education. Approximately 3,200 Anganwadi children in 160 such centers are being benefited by our project. There is need for capacity building of local non-government organizations. There is severe dearth of trend and efficient organizations that can effectively contribute to ongoing CSR activities initiatives by companies. This seriously compromises scaling up of CSR activity and subsequently limits the scope of such activities. Effort to be made by corporate to develop NGOs and NPOs for implementing CSR projects as per their requirement. There appears to be a gap between CSR requirement of company and projects being executed by various agencies. It is need of our to bridge the gap between requirement of corporates and implementing agencies by customizing the projects. In the field of livelihood generation, we have taken up this apprenticeship training. Already engaging apprentices in different trades and imparting a hands-on training in their respective fields under CSR initiative. Objective of this project is to utilize the facility available in our organization for imparting practical on-job training to students, passing out of educational institutions, and imparting the required skills and knowledge for enhancing their empl employability in industries. 906, 906 number of apprentices were provided training in various states during last year, that is, Manage Select 2021. This year, we are targeting expenditure of rupees 10 crore for training of appendix. Function, this training has resulted in functional skill development, progress in hard skills such as project management, leadership and soft skill development, progress in critical leadership skills such as problem solving, communication, etc. Result of the program, we have found that trainees commanded salary higher than their stipend, what we are probably paying as per our training program. This has resulted in their employability also, thereby directly impacting the student community. Challenge. As per amendment rules, expenditure toward effects assessment for any financial year shall not exceed 5% of total CSR expenditure. Or which 50 lakh, whichever is less. 
This will increase the impact of their initiatives on the lives of common people. It is suggested that a project, projectization, scaling up, and sustainability of CSR projects need to be safeguarded at all costs for their efficiency and efficiency. It is noted that only medium and large corporate houses are involved in CSR activities that to in selected geographical area. The CSU will set case case for more companies to be brought under the CSR domain to address the issue of reaching out to wider geographical area. Involvement of small and medium enterprises in the CSR domain will be essential. This will help CSR reach reach out to other locations and cover a large number of communities and help companies value a company play a valuable role. In addressing various social and development issues, this is the experience which I wanted to share, which I have covered. My last slide is showing the award which we have received from Honorable President of India, National CSR Award, 2018, which was given by Honorable President. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your such a Uh, you, yeah. like explaining the uh, csr activities of P uh, power grid and i would also like to thank power grid for uh, being the sponsor for supporting this uh, csr uh, webinar we look uh, forward for more such associations with you sir pleasure to have you now thank i request you. honey we can't hear you am i audible sir now you are yeah i'm sorry uh, i request our coach mr sanjay khanna to kindly uh, moderate the question and answer sessions that have been posted by the delegates over to you sir sanjay you are on mute yeah. sanjay ji right i am there with you thank you shivani thank you suman and i think we all had a wonderful afternoon of uh, so much of fountain head of information coming in and uh, i must before i go on to the questions i must thank personally uh, the president of icsci cs devender desh pande uh, mr inder mohan singh uh, sir i think your emphasis and right at the beginning which is so which has been relevant throughout our session was now the shift is from comply instead of comply or explain the shift is to comply or pay penalty which is i think something which we need to all bear it in mind and then of course the impact assessment and of course the registration of the implementing partners and sir your presentation was really wonderful since it brought out so many practical aspects uh, mr sudhakar uh, rao uh, uh, emphasized that the csr is a corporate responsibility and now a legal obligation and not just a mere formality and i think everybody has covered it so well and of course mr holani uh, you shared the achievements of power grid with us a humongous task in under csr what power grid has been done and it's a pleasure for us to have had you with us today i go on to the question and answers there have been many questions and answers and i must compliment our uh, panelists again before we go on to that that uh, so many of the questions which have come in you know have somewhere been covered by uh, uh, one of our speakers uh, today and some 
questions were repetitive, so I'm just trying to take questions which are more of relevance, and we will try and accommodate as many as we can in this short time. I would also request our uh, panelists uh, to answer whatever question, whoever thinks, uh, uh, you know, uh, to have, uh, we can have a quick answer. Please feel free to answer any question, you know, which I'm uh, reading out, uh, which, which have come from the participants. And uh, of course, uh, uh, some of the repetitive ones, I'm sorry to the delegates, I may be leaving it out. Now, the first question, I must read the first question because that was the very first uh, uh, point what we had on our chat, chat list. Uh, many of the uh, sendees are anonymous, so I will forget the names where I am not mentioning the name. The question says, now state government has come up with a proposal to contribute CSR fund towards rural development schemes. Individual or groups such as resident welfare association, institution, public and private companies, or from the community shall identify a project. Two thirds of the estimated amount of work will be contributed by government. Balance one third of the estimated amount of the work shall be contributed by public. Is it possible to utilize CSR funds towards that one third part from the public contribution? This is a question, sir. Uh, please feel free to uh, uh, provide us with your answers. Can I request Mr. Singh to take up this question? Is Mr. Singh there? Mr. Singh is there, yeah. We can see him. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Singh. Look, uh, I think uh, my take would be that let's look at the Schedule 7 activities. Uh, any activity which falls within Schedule 7 uh, is can be part of the CSR. Uh, any contribution which is being made in cash can be only limited to the funds which are uh, specified in the schedule 7. So my take would be one has to look at those individual initiatives to see whether they do fall under any of the uh, activities as, as being covered under uh, schedule 7. And if subject to the fact that if the company and its board and the CSR committees uh, find it suitable that activity uh, which is being proposed or recommended by the government, or uh, if that falls within any of those activities, yes, it can be undertaken as a CSR activity. I would not like to answer a specific uh, request with regard to each of the activities which are probably planned, unless one has the full facts. Uh, I'm a little hesitant to uh, give any view. However, having said that, if any activity falls within Schedule 7, and these Schedule 7 activities are very wide, the government has uh, been saying in FAQs that Schedule 7 activities are being very wide and any activity which falls any of the categories can be done. So that's what my view would be. Uh, uh, happy to uh, probably uh, seek any other guidance from Mr. Sudhakar also, if you have. Yeah, I agree with you, Mr. Singh, that uh, number one, that whenever this is nothing but kind of a public-private uh, participation and uh, CSR rules permit that uh, the companies can collaborate while discharging the CSR obligations. And definitely, as you rightly mentioned, that number one, it should be covered under the Schedule 7. And in addition to that, the amount should be identifiable. Whenever you are collaborating with some other organizations while discharging your CSR obligations, you should be able to identify the money, what you have contributed and where it has been spent so that in the CSR annual report, you should be able to clearly bring that, yes, the money has been spent for this particular purpose. I agree with you. Uh, thank you, sir, for your input. So we now move on to the next question from Subhash. Uh, Subhash says that UCSR account need to be open in a scheduled bank. We want to understand whether it needs to be escrow account necessarily. Oh, this account is actually escrow account only. If you see, the utilization of any transfers to this account can be uh, done only for the projects which are ongoing projects and have been uh, specified and disclosed. So I do not know the escrow in that sense is would be a wrong word to use, but this is definitely a lockbox mechanism wherein the money which was earlier uh, kept with the companies uh, in an account needs to be separated from the company's account into a specified uh, account. Uh, it's like, you know, unpaid dividend account. So it is the amount 
can be has to be put into a separate account. There is an obligation, and the utilization of that account can be done only for the ongoing projects which are being disclosed. So whether you call it escrow arrangement or not, but it's not an escrow because uh, it's not the beneficiary can claim it. So in that sense, uh, it will be wrong. It will be wrong to call it an escrow, but uh, it's a lockbox mechanism where the money needs to be used and shall be used only for the uh, ongoing projects which are. Uh, related to that particular financial. Understood, sir. So that means it, uh, it it should not, the right terminology would not be an escrow account, but yes, a separate account for this purpose. Yes. And the next uh, question uh, uh, comes from, now there's no, huh. uh, CSR is applicable to company. However, in the preceding financial year 2021, it has not crossed profit of five crores. Do we have to do CSR spend even if the preceding financial year net profit before tax is less than five crores? As I had mentioned that uh, once CSR uh, Act triggers, the 135-1 provision triggers for the next three financial years, even if unless until you have the next three consecutive financial years, I can say, if you are not falling in the threshold limits, then only you can give up. Otherwise, you have to continue to spend the money. This is unfortunately, sometimes it may so happen that especially because of this COVID period, there were some companies which were into losses. But as because of that rule three, they have to spend the money. Thank you, sir. I hope it's uh, clear. Uh, the next question comes from Bhavan. He says, if company wants to use CSR amount to some hospital, offer some research in the healthcare industry. So is it possible to donate it that way? Yes, so they are specific. Under Schedule 7, that's why this is certainly, this will be covered. To a large extent, I can say on the face of it, of course, that you ought to see the nitty gritties subsequently, but it is covered in the Schedule 7. Uh, related questions, sir. I camp conducted, would that be deemed as a project? See, I mean, um, Mr. Singh, wherever you want to take that, uh, kind of yeah, I, 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 got sorry. I got disconnected in between, so I missed the question also. So please go ahead. Please go ahead. Okay. See, the ICAM thing, you know, what is the difference between activities and project, though it is not clearly defined as such in the rules, but anything which is spilling over one year, it is a multiple, uh, I mean, in a multi year project, that point of time only we call it as project, otherwise, we can call it a CSR activity. So, conducting an ICAM camp, I don't think it is a project, it is only an activity because it is not spilling over, over one year. So, it should, according to me, it is considered as an activity, not as a project. Unless until you have to set up a hospital and then you know, special things and all, it all depends upon the nature of uh, project what you are taking. Uh, a related question, sir. Contribution made in excess of rupees one crore in the corpus of the charitable trust for making an hospital, whether the same shall be considered as project for the purpose of impact assessment? If yes, when the impact assessment has to be done? Uh, impact, Can I, uh, yeah, impact, is, uh, impact study needs to be done very clearly for the projects which are above one CR. Uh, of course, a lot of questions are being raised. Is one CR is the uh, is the right amount, or they should be higher? It's a separate issue. And uh, minimum period which has been prescribed for any project, uh, even if this is beyond one CR for a company which has got ten CR and more for preceding three years, uh, uh, the minimum uh, period which needs to be uh, uh, where the impact study needs to be done and can be done is one year. So after one year, like Sudhakar ji also mentioned, there is no maximum period which has been prescribed. The minimum period is one year. So for one year, you have to wait for any project to complete. And once the one year is completed, then only the impact uh, assessment can be taken place. Thank you so much, Mr. Singh. I think you, uh, in this one answer, you also answered the next two questions. I think it was a very uh, apt answer you gave us. Uh, the next question is from Vivek. He says, can CSR project involving training apprentices is permitted as a CSR expenditure under Section 135 of the Companies Act? 
Sir, to answer this question, I know, let me put it this way, because if every activity if you specify and you say it is covered under CSR or not, I will give a general answer for this. All the participants, whenever you think that this activity is covered under CSR or not, please refer to Schedule 7. And see, a Ministry of Corporate Affairs also under a circular, it has advised that you can interpret this as liberal as possible. But you should not camouflage a transaction as if it is a CSR transaction. To a large extent, even training of these apprentices, is, according to me, it will fall definitely under Schedule 7. But if you go on asking every activity, I care camp, or you know, some this, some that, and all those things, you know, it is very, very difficult to, I mean, it is a, a, a not proper utilization of our time. The general thing is, whenever you have an, uh, this thing, whether it falls or not, please read Schedule 7 comprehensively, you will find the answer for that. Yeah. Somebody is... Uh... Uh, the next question is uh, uh, somewhat similar to what you have just answered, but since this particular thing is very pertinent, uh, pertinent in terms of uh, you know what's been happening to the world in the last two years, Vivek asked that has MCA clarified on permitting CSR expenditure on COVID vaccination of employees along with vaccination of customers of company? I think the answer is simple, but let it come from one of our experts. I think there has been a notification. I'm just trying to uh, pull out that notification where vaccination was covered. Uh, I, I'm not very uh, familiar with the language, so one has to look at it. Uh, what I will, what, what I suggest is, I will forward you those notifications, and probably one can see whether a particular circumstance in which you are talking about gets covered by that or not. Uh, my my take is, you know, uh, answering the very specific questions. Sometimes it becomes a little bit of issue for me because we are lawyers and uh, I, I do not want to give any opinions on the specific case to case basis. So my take would be, uh, like Sudhagaji also said, uh, uh, one has to see these are all, all notifications related matters and the coverage of any specific incidents under that or not. So my take would be, uh, there are notifications with regard to COVID, which started in from, from April, May of 2020 onwards with regard to allowing uh, the spend on the CSR, on the COVID related uh, many things, and they have in multiple circulars. So one has to look at those circulars. Uh, I'm trying to pull out one circular, which is uh, dated 23 March, 23rd March 2020. What does it say? But for the inquiry, I'm not very sure. So can I uh, just add in uh, uh, one part here, sir? I mean, uh, since the yeah, query so is... My, my request would be look at the circular which I just mentioned and it doesn't talk about uh, uh, with regard to the employees but like this point has been touched by me as well as Sudhakar that any incidental benefit to an employee as part of a larger population of the beneficiaries cannot be questioned because they're, they do fall under that uh, category of the beneficiaries. But if anything is pointed specifically for employees or any category of employees and families, I do not think that will get covered under the CSR. That's my broader view. However, the circular of 23rd uh, March of 2020 probably would answer the query which is being asked now. I totally agree, uh, Mr. Singh. And I think, uh, you know, the question, uh, I mean, uh, the questioner also asked that whether uh, vaccination of uh, the customers of the company would be covered, but that again would be promotion, I guess. Yeah, so that is a very, uh, like we said, that you can't be choosing a class of beneficiaries. You know, that is nothing but an extension of your own obligation. The question was, you know, raised when many of the, uh, during the COVID, many of the uh, manufacturing companies were approached by the distributors and dealers who had their, uh, uh, what do you call, unskilled laborers or other people. They were probably not getting, not able to get their salaries or uh, the benefits of the travel or something. So any expenditure to that which was contributed by the companies, my view was that it is not a CSR expenditure and uh, it is only in, you know extension of your goodwill to your uh, own business partners because dealers are nothing but your business partners or employees or employees, customers are nothing but your business partners. So I do not think that will qualify in the spirit of the CSR spend. Sounds very logical, sir. Thank you. 
The next question is from Neha. Where company has funded a capital asset, where a company has funded a capital asset through CSR, where the company is required to disclose the details of that capital asset in its director's report. And another question just adds on whether it is to be disclosed in the director's report and also to be disclosed in Annexure 2 and CSR 2. It is to be, no, because uh, whether it is a capital expenditure or a revenue expenditure, if it is a CSR expenditure, you have to reflect that both in your annual report on CSR as well as on CSR 2 also. It is to be disclosed. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And of course, there are so many not questions, requests uh, to us to share uh, the PPT of today's webinar. We should definitely, we would definitely. We'll do it tomorrow, sir. We'll do it tomorrow. Certainly. Thanks, Shivani. Then the next question comes from Aditi. Uh, I have done one question, sir. Okay. It says that it is applicable to only where net profit. Uh, I mean, the act says that it is applicable to a company whose net profit is more than five crores. And net profit for the purpose, purpose of applicability is not provided anywhere. Everywhere it is saying net profit before tax should be taken into consideration for the purpose of calculation of CSR spending. So for the purpose of applic applicability, what should we take? Profit before tax or profit after tax? Profit before tax. Profit before tax. So that clarifies. Under section 198. Right, right, sir. Thank you. The next question says, in case the implementing agency is implementing projects through another NGO, whether the second NGO is liable to take CSR registration number for undertaking, undertaking the project? Yes. The CSR rule says it so should be that also CSR rule says it should be a qualified implementing agency. If your implementing agency is subletting it further to another agency, it should also be a qualified implementing agency. So the registration is required. Correct. 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 So that I think answers it very clearly. Uh, Manish uh, asks our panel today that is CSR 2 applicable to companies having financial year January to December as their last filing is for uh, 31st December 20 and not 2021 as mentioned in notification dated 11 to 2022. I think it's it's a clarification sought for uh, the change in uh, financial year, sir. So to my knowledge, it is applicable. You have to file it. Okay. Uh, next from Rekha, she says, company wishes to open recreational club for old age people on minimum chargeable basis. Will it qualify for CSIR? A recreational club for old age people with minimum chargeable base on minimum minimum chargeable basis. According to me, that uh, just to say like that, you know, that minimum chargeable basis, you cannot give an answer like that. It needs to be examined. The, what are the modalities? Because it seems to be a commercial activity. And uh, anyway, as, I, as, I, as far as I'm concerned, I cannot give an answer uh, on a webinar like this, as far as this particular question is concerned. Mr. Singh, you I may appreciate uh, I think uh, these are very specific questions. I would be happy to answer them. This book provided uh, full facts are given to us. And uh, 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 simply, you know, there are so many ifs and buts in that, whether the asset would be held by the company, asset would be transferred to the uh, concerned beneficiary, and it is beneficiary, which is in what form, for profit, not for profit. So there are so many questions around that. You know, uh, uh, it, it is very difficult to answer that question uh, the way it's being asked right now. Uh Sanjay, I don't know uh, how many more questions we have. Should we, you know, because we time is ex uh, being exceeded. Yeah, in fact, uh, I was about to say. Uh, Sanjay, Sanjay, to Sanjay, Sanjay, I have to leave now. Sanjay, may I ask? May I? May I? May I request uh, that I may ask a question, please? Please. Before do. we go. Yeah, that's the, be the last one. I, yeah. Thank you so much. You know, a lot of people ask me that uh, you know whatever is the amount unspent. Uh, uh, has to be transferred to a separate account, and that's the obligation of the company. However, when uh, it is transferred to the implementing agency and they don't spend it in, in time, how does the whole 
uh, thing uh, uh, happen? Who transfers the unspent amount? It's the obligation of the company. Does the company take it back from the implementing agency or ask them to put it out there and then uh, uh, sends it or gives it back to the implementing agency? It's that kind of a technical question that I'm interested in understanding. Sorry, I think uh, yeah, he's, uh, you're right because this question was touched upon, but let me repeat it. Uh, this practice used to be there prior to the uh, February, uh, January 2021 20, circular because company used to transfer the fund to implementing agency saying that you know, our job is over and uh, to, be on the, to, be, to be on the safe side. But now uh, the obligation to transfer the unspent amount to the unspent account is of the company. So in a situation where the company has already uh, transferred the fund, which is live in the hands of the implementing agency, that needs to be brought back to the company and so that the company can deposit it. Irrespective of whether that amount comes back or not, company's obligation to transfer that to unspent account is very much safe. Thank you. I think that clarifies thank you so much. and thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, uh, Chair Sumat, for giving me this opportunity. Over to you, Shivan. Thank you, sir. Um, now I request Madam Ranjana Agarwalji, our co-chair, to kindly propose the vote of thanks. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shivani and uh, PhD, to give me this opportunity. And uh, I thank uh, all the 500-odd participants that have joined in this uh, very important webinar uh, to have uh, listened to the, our esteemed panelists today very patiently and thank you very much uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Indra Mohan Singh, Mr. Sudhakar, Mr. Ajay Holani uh, and our, uh, uh, Mr. Desh Pandey. Thank you so much for uh, giving your valuable inputs. I can't uh, express enough uh, 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 how much of a masterclass this has been, especially uh, Mr. Singh has laid down uh, the entire gamut of the law around it and clarified so many of our queries. Uh, Mr. Sudhakar, thank you so much for uh, you know getting into the nitty gritties and uh, coming out with specific uh, answers to the fine print actually. And uh, thank you, Mr. Deshpande very much uh, for graciously uh, uh, accepting and representing uh, uh, so many of the uh, uh, you know, clarifications that we will have from time to time now that new lo laws and rules have come out. So thank you so much, Mr. Pandey. Uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Holani, uh, your 300 crores are being spent uh, very uh, judiciously, and uh, it has benefited such a large number of people. And uh, over the years, for so many years, uh, be it cancer, be it uh, healthcare, be it education, be it rural development, you are all there. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Holani, for bringing all this and inspiring all of us to contribute, go on contributing to this very important uh, uh, you know, uh, objective of the government, uh, and uh, it's important that we uh, uh, go along hand in hand and uh, add to our social responsibility. Uh, thank you, uh, Sanjay ji, uh, Mr. S uh, Chadha, thank you so much. Um, uh, Vivek, Mr. Rastagi, you set the tone in the beginning, Mr. Rastagi, uh, uh, you know, explaining and, uh, you know, bringing out the main points that needed to be cleared. Thank you so much. And to our uh, uh, sponsors, uh, the Power Grid uh, company, thank you so much. Uh, and Shivani, thank you for, thank all, you, uh, you know, being the backbone of this very important uh, uh, webinar. Thank you. Ma'am, uh, I would also like to add uh, with you, uh, we would like to thank ICSI also for their support, for their presence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you so and also thank just Khan want to add that also we have, we also have 2000 plus registration. You know, no, also Mr. Khanna that he went through various questions yes. so meticulously and picking the, the relevant which could be beneficial to all other listeners and participants. 
Yes. I know. And sir, so, uh, we had 2,000 plus registrations, and we have just told the IT team to have minimum 1,000, yes, 2,000 plus registrations. First time in the history of the chamber. It's a, I mean, landmark thing. We'll just, uh, we have uh, requested our IT to have at least uh, 1,000 uh, members to uh, allow to be logged in for this, for the next webinar. Shivani, if 2,000 is registering today, Yes. Tomorrow, if, I have a, if we have a seminar for 5,000, why are you restricting to 1,000? Sir, uh, sir, we are in talks for 2,000. Uh, sir, you are very right, sir. We are in talks for 2,000, sir. And as we go went along today, I had a thought which I can share with everybody. I am also going to propose a half day, at least a minimum workshop on CSR very soon uh, and have eminent speakers. It could be virtual, physical, a hybrid, etc. to go into the nuances and discuss, you know, Threadbare the 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 uh, gray areas and the practical problems and the suggestions which may emanate and how solutions can be drawn and the findings of that and the you know the minutes can be shared with a larger uh, audience as well. I think that should be a suggestion which I'll take it up to the committee and whichever way they finally approve. But that's the thought which came up to me um, as we were uh, going through the program today. The complexities are. Uh, quite deep, complex, and um, in a way exciting. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Everyone. Thank Have you a nice weekend and stay safe. You. Everybody. Shivani, our job is over. Yours is not over yet. Half Sir, I have to make the highlights. <laughs> half the people. Want highlights the... plus, yeah. The PPT will share that. tomorrow. <laughs> Thank, Thank and, you very much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Very Rani good webinar. Yeah. And and, uh, Sanjay, it was there. very well moderated. You brought out the right questions, to be very honest. Coming from I think, you know, there were so many questions, but uh, I know I had the chairman sitting on my head. I said I can't exceed. And of course, uh, I would compliment our, uh, you know, panelists, really. You know, many of the things are already some way or the other. Already, yeah. Actually, I missed, that, I missed that part. Uh, Sanjay, I want to ask one question which I missed out. You know, uh, 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 there was a, an amount that uh, could be given to PMKs and that could have been utilized for set-off in subsequent years. Now, if an amount in 1920 was given to PMKs because that was when uh, COVID was about to start, and then in uh, 2021, you utilize, say, 25% of that amount um, uh, and against a circular, actually. That circular is still pending for 21-22. Can we utilize it? You know, uh, MCA came up with a circular saying that uh, jitna bhi PMKs ko denge, that you can utilize in next three years. 2021 mein to circular nikal diya, you can utilize it. But 21-22 mein circular ni nikala. Let's, let's, we, uh, you can, uh, why don't you write a mail to uh, Mr. Singh or, uh, you know, to for clarification, Sanjanaji. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he can respond, I'm uh, respond immediately. Do you think if the circular had come for 1920 that it could be utilized, uh, it could be used for a period of three years? Would hmm. that not be sufficient uh, clarification that that particular amount having having been given in 1920 is eligible for being set off or uh, uh, utilized deemed to be utilized in three years or would you need a circular so, every year uh, to yeah, uh, so confirm? because they came out because they came out with a circular for uh, setting off in a particular year in 21 22 they have not come out with a circular so one wonders ki Ab isko set off kar sakte nahi to penalty lag jayegi. You know? To ye, uh, uh, I, I forgot to ask. Uh, uh, Aap mail kar dijiye na, they will be able to answer. Haan, Haan main, main, main chamber ko mail kar deti hoon. Haan, haan, Shivani ke take care. Shivani right. kar deti. Thank so you. Sumanji, main ne ek suggestion diya tha regarding the section 8 companies particularly. I sincerely feel that there is a case which can be built that Section 8 companies being a non-profit companies and they are basically 
and to promote arts, commerce, music, and such like even healthcare and such like things. And that itself is a you know CSR kind of a activity because in any case it needs funds and funds are coming by way of donation from the corporate sector. So why further uh, have a multiplier effect that such a company need to have a CSR also? Uh, sir, uh, I would like to... Particularly, no, during my interaction with the secretary MCA as a, one of the yes, PhD chambers uh, delegate, I remember. So uh, we were told that uh, Section 8 companies are, some of the companies are very large. So if we exempt the Section 8 companies, then their corpus is so huge that uh, it will not be in the fitness of things. So therefore, I am trying to put a cap that only where the obligation of CSR expenditure is around, say, 2 crore or 3 crore or 5 crore, that limit we can set, that we request MCA to look at it again and re-examine whether such a onerous kind of compliance be imposed on Section 8 companies if they are small in nature and small in size. So, Ms. Mr. Rasagi, can I tell you? Hanji. Hanji, what Any case, just CSR expenditure, hota hai, wo in your income tax return, that is uh, uh, exempted either under ATG or under uh, that uh, PMKs wala, jo 100%. In any case, you get an exemption. So Section 8 company, ko to, if they do CSR expenditure, uh, they, it will be covered uh, for that 85% that needs to be utilized. So in any case, that gets covered. They no, have just a PhD Chamber of Commerce. I mean, that... that... Chamber itself is doing a kind of a activity which qualifies for you know CSR. So, unko kya obligation hai CSR ka? Let them focus on on the work for which they have been promoted exclusively. But hamara kam. Ab jaise humne ek hospital banaya hua hai Sakit me Pushpavati Singhania Research Hospital. That hospital, you will be surprised, it's purely based on the contribution by the corporates of JK Group and, of course, certain other companies. And it is not making profit. That, that is a Section 8 company. On the top of it, as and when some profit is there, that is a surplus in the income and expenditure statement. So they are have to have the CSR activity. I mean... Uh, it, di it diverts their attention. You know, it is, the focus should remain on the core activity that is the promotion of healthcare for such institutes. So, therefore, I am trying to put a cap that only smaller Section 8 companies be exempted, not all. And for them, it should be comply or explain kind of a provision. For, for I do not agree with Mr. Sudhakar that initially it was not the intention. I have all the press cuttings. I was always involved in this uh, uh, promotion during the finalization of the company's bill. There is a statement made by Mr. Pilot, Sachin Pilot, the then Minister of Corporate Affairs, that CSR will be purely voluntary exercise and there will not be inspector Raj and they will not be having a danda on the corporates that how they should devise this. I, I had, as a matter of fact, deleted all this from my my the presentation today because I thought okay, it is too old a story. Ah, <laughs> Rus Rusli ji, haan ji, haan ji. Aapne question itna lamba push kiya ke wo present lamba ho gaya. Chairman sahab, humare coat pan ke baithe hue hain. Nee, actually your point Achha, has merit. My personal view point has merit. Let us take it up with this and other issues with C, uh, MCA uh, haan along haan with ICA. Yeah, in student right, 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 right. company secretary. Sumant, may I wish you a belated happy birthday? Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I, I joined Ranjana ji in wishing you a belated happy birthday as well. Okay, okay. Or sir, you have not seen anything. Look, separation of uh, office of chairman. How much relief did you relief the Sebi? Right, right. All the chambers made representation to the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, and of course to SEBI. And this is a very good thing that good sense has prevailed finally on SEBI. 
Why create but disruption see, I, at a stage when we are facing so many external challenges? But but sir, CII का नाम आया था paper में. CII का नाम इसलिए आया था कि CII को चलाते हैं ये बड़े-बड़े लोग जैसे राहुल मजाज जी का जो अब तो चले गए हैं उनका group और other corporates और वो Bombay based हैं. Unfortunately, दिल्ली में prime minister हैं but दिल्ली में corporate sector की कोई power नहीं है. Power corporate की वहीं पे है. Right. लेकिन लेकिन आपको ये जानने की खुशी होगी जो जो ग्राउंड उन्होंने दिए है ना वो ये सब दिए हैं जो हमने भी टेकअप किए थे बट आई हैव टू से मिस्टर सुधाकर वॉज प्रेजेंटेशन वॉज वेरी गुड हाँ ऑफकोर्स यू नो रिलायंस इज रिलायंस यू नो इट इज नॉट फॉर नथिंग दैट दे आर नंबर वन यू नो एंड यू नो हाउ मेनी कंपनी सेक्रेटरीज दे हैव मोर देन हंड्रेड सुंदर है वहाँ पे इन ओशन एंड नहीं इट इज एन ओशन द ओनली प्रॉब्लम विद रिलायंस इज दैट वन पर्सन में भी डूइंग ओनली दिस पार्ट ऑफ द सिक्योरिटील मैटर वन पर्सन में भी डूइंग ओनली एनालिसिस ऑफ द कॉर्पोरेट वन पर्सन में भी रेस्पॉन्सिबल ओनली चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स वर्किंग फॉर देम सर हाँ जी हाँ जी हाँ जी उनका सेटअप ऐसा ही ह� Okay, I mean, thank you. We'll also um, uh, take it. Uh, we'll also take. Yeah, we have participants also who are also part of this, uh, for, you know, discussion, healthy discussion. And any views, suggestions um, for future programs, etc. Please do write to us. Thank you, and have a nice day. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.